Hello, everyone. Welcome to Story Path Showcase, where this week we are playing They Came from Camp Murder Lake. Uh, last episode, we had our session zero. Uh, each person in the group has created two characters uh, with the understanding that the first batch uh, probably is not going to make it to the opening credits of our film, the title of which will be revealed during the opening credits of our film. In the interim, though, I would like to go ahead and introduce our cast. Um, let's start things off with uh, Alex. Please tell us who you are, what you do, your pronouns, who you're playing, their pronouns, and anything you would like to share with the viewers at home or promote. Sure. So, uh, hi, I'm Alex, he, him, uh, playing uh, Tobias first, and then I'll be playing uh, Colin Culpepper Jr., um, filthy casual gamer, doc diving dog dad, and a personal trainer in training. Um, you can find me frequently volunteering as tribute for many of the uh, campaigns run by Travis and other content creators on this platform, in addition to uh, sowing dissent amongst my fellow investigators in the Masks of Nyarlathotep uh, live play podcast. Uh, Released weekly on Mondays at theoldwayspodcast.com. Also available on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, whatever. Um, you can also feel free to get your dose of adorable by following Back to the Best Boy on Instagram. And occasionally find me posting hot takes, uh, puppy pictures, fitness info, and occasional thirst traps on uh, littlenitis underscore twitter.com. Thank you so Amanda. much. I appreciate that. <laughs> We're, this is gonna, we're in for a night. Um, next up, Allie, please uh, give us all of your pertinent details. Hi, I'm Allie. She, her. I'm playing May. Also, she, her. Uh, she's a bossy nerd who thinks she should be in charge. I do not have as an impressive as a resume <laughs> as Alex just did. So I, I, I have a lot of dogs and a lot of snakes, but they don't have Instagrams that are as cool. So... <laughs> So I don't have anything to follow. So you should follow everybody else instead. <laughs> well, we, we all think you're amazing and we're happy that you're here. Thank you for being here. Uh, next up, uh, Gilbert, please give us your pertinent details. Hi, uh, I'm Gilbert. Uh, found everywhere. We're almost a nomad. Um, uh, tonight I am playing, uh, pronouns he, him. Tonight I am playing uh, Garrett Ferris. Uh, also he, him. Yeah, we might find some things have changed with Garrett because I don't know how to save PDFs properly. Uh, but it's all good. Uh, hopefully, you know, he he makes it out just fine. If in the case that he doesn't, I will be playing Matteo Thrash Alvarez. Uh, the both characters, he him. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And last but not least, Chaz, please give us your pertinence. Hello everyone, so my name is Chaz, uh, he, him. I am a PhD student who studies like video games and storytelling and music because studying anything helpful was actually like really boring. Um, as far as things go, so occasionally I am allowed uh, free reign uh, with uh, Travis's channel or Onyx Path um, where I just get to torture some of my very closest friends. Um, most recently was in a dragon campaign where for the first time Travis did one of my like longer campaigns that was super fun. Uh, brought in an older campaign. It was a big clash. They were equally matched and by equally matched I meant I put like demigods against people who like just became silent like two days ago. Fun, fun times. Um, other than that, I occasionally uh, write a few things for Travis. So I am around. If you're looking for specifically me, you probably can't find me because I promised Travis four years ago that I would start using Twitter. And I definitely will because I don't make promises. They just sometimes take a lot longer than anticipated. You're fulfilling it in stages. Um, I guess getting there. Right. You have a Twitter handle now. Um, so I guess that's. Uh, and I know what it is. And you know what it is. That's an important step which I did not uh, know for like three years. Perhaps one day you'll get like a logo image or something, maybe write a bio. Right. Um, but yeah, in the uh, in the meantime, of course, it, uh, once again, I'm Travis Legg. Uh, he, him, they are all fine. Uh, I'll be the director for this evening and we are going to dive right into our tale. So uh, when we had our pre-production meeting, we discussed we wanted to see a cannibal family, a creepy child, 
and just a lot of blood and gore. Uh, those were the things we were aiming for, right? Yeah. Excellent. Um, so uh, remind me again, uh, Alex, your character's name is? Tobias. Um, it, it's just one name. He doesn't have a, a surname. Tobias. Excellent. Tobias is a new kid in town, right? Tobias is a new kid in town with big dreams. Okay. Big dreams. Well, well, Tobias has made friends with a couple of the other kids in town. And as the camera opens up, uh, it's uh, nearing dusk in the outskirts of the small Illinois town of Springwood. You all met at school relatively recently and Tobias uh, fancies himself uh, something of a, a nascent TikTok sensation and wanting to experiment with the new uh, 10 minute long video options on TikTok. Uh, he's decided he wants to make a documentary uh, about something spooky, something scary. Uh, you all are familiar with an urban legend uh, that, that occurs around the town that uh, in the late 1970s, there was apparently a mass murder. Five college kids who were uh, passing through town on their way from Champaign to spring break uh, went missing. And they were only found a couple of years later, uh, or I should say their remains were found uh, with evidence that they had all been uh, slaughtered brutally with uh, likely makeshift implements, things that did not resemble um, normal weapons According to the urban legend, uh, it looked like most of them had been killed with farming equipment. Um, and so tell me, uh, as we're panning down over like the sunset on this back highway just outside of, of Sherwood, uh, Illinois, um, I'm sorry, Springwood, Illinois, um, we'll say Gilbert, what sort of property uh, was were, were these remains found on? What sort of property is uh, is the camera revealing that the car is pulling into? Is the is it sort of uh, cranes down behind the rear of the vehicle? Got to be a cabin in the woods vibe for me. That's just my vote. Uh, okay. I'm a sucker for that trope. All right, so uh, you pull into this remote cabin uh, just outside of town. Uh, Rumor has it that uh, this cabin belongs to uh, an old family from around these parts um, that was under suspicion of some involvement with the murders, but um, nothing ever stuck. They were never able to make any arrests. And that family's uh, last name is uh, Baker the Baker family. Um, so as you're pulling into this cabin that's supposedly Baker family property, um, what's the first thing that the camera notices to let us know that something is out of place, Chaz? Uh, let's go with like the lights are on. Excellent. As you're pulling up, this cabin supposedly is abandoned, supposedly doesn't even have electricity to it. You can see light flickering through the windows. Um, and who is in the driver's seat? We're going to say uh, that, Ellie, your character's in the driver's seat. You're driving. Um, what are you going to do when you, see, when you notice that those lights are on? I'm going to tell everybody, hey, didn't we say that this cabin doesn't have light like electricity to it who uh who are you riding with it's it's tobias garrett and who are the other two uh hawks may and which one is hawks may's the nerd right mm -hmm. which one is hawks hawks is the joker okay right right right, right. okay sorry about that all right sorry um, 
perhaps the abandoned cabin isn't so abandoned. I flip my camera on. Uh, as soon as you bring your camera up, the front door of the cabin swings wide open. Oh, shit. <laughs> and you see a guy come limping out of the cabin. He's about six foot eight both ways. Um, hairline probably three quarters of the way back along his head. Um, one eye is looking at you and the other eye is looking out into the property. Uh, he's wearing a pair of overalls that look like they were washed sometime uh, in the 1980s, maybe, um, and uh, no shirt. And he's holding uh, what appears to be a ax. How do you think he'll be if we ask him a question? <laughs> did you did you get that on the on the TikTok? Oh, that's gonna be great. Speaker for bio. Yeah. I just like slowly lower it and just, <laughs> and just kind of focus on the the axe man. He comes. He looks over at you and comes limping over. I I I like reach over, and make sure the door is locked still, and the windows like up. I don't take my eyes off. I'm just kind of feeling up the door. He kind of like rolls his eyes when you do that and says, what are you doing out here? Oh, shit. It speaks. Uh, uh, uh. I'll, I'll like roll down my window a little bit. Uh, we uh, were looking for, uh, as it turns out, I'm filming a documentary about the area documentary yeah we don't need no fangle and he spits out it looks maybe chaw ish but there's like a, a thicker sort of consistency to it than you would expect and there's a odor that accompanies it that's strong enough that it, it like wafts in to the window when he spits this chaw out uh smells like rotting meat oh. Uh, yeah, I'm afraid to tell you what you do need. You can't be poking around in parts what don't belong to you. Well, sir, uh, unless you own this property. Own this? Oh, no, don't put that on me. No, sir. No, I am the, I am, I am the caretaker. That's well, right. I sure did. I promised, I promised, uh, good old paul i would i would take care of this property for him i promised that many years ago i will uh very now i'm intrigued so i'm going to um without taking my eyes off him slowly like open the door and slide out like still keeping the camera on him peter you say hmm? paul T paul whatever tell paul, me about paul baker that's right tell me tell me about paul baker what, what did he tell you to do? I uh, told him, he told him, I, I told him that I would take care of the property for him. It, it just, it, he would, had to go. He, him, him and, and, and the, them kids of his had to get on and they got on. And so I took care of the property for them, but you cannot be messing around these places. Oh no, no, we wouldn't, we wouldn't dream of it. Um, we were just, uh, again, we were, we were just looking for stuff in the area and we, now you know, you listen to me, young man, there ain't nothing but nothing to find here. Don't go poking around this cabin. This place is cursed. You will be doomed. But you're okay here, right? You're safe. You've, well, you've been here for a while. I've made my arrangements with god what <laughs> <laughs> did you get kicked in the head or something I made my arrangement with the property owner oh so so there's really no reason we can't uh excuse me sir we actually made our arrangements with the property owner as well if you ask the owner we uh we were given permission to to film here and to ask the owner. Documentary. Yes. Well, I see you got some fancy cameras with you. I see you got a nice little pretty girl driving you around. You got yourself a Ouija board in that car? Uh, 
you know, now that you mention it, um, oh, that's that's the cabin right there. You know, I'll it's only for a, a minute. It's for a good portion of our of our final grade, and we really needed to get this. I mean, we have a squeegee in the back, like that's good enough. Squee. Oh my god. <laughs> I was being I was being sarcastic. The owner is dead. Well, we understand that, but the are you with, sure with, you understand it? Because y'all seem like you might be a little bit um, uh, soft in 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 the in, in the head. No, we just we just been on the road for a while. We're hungry, you know. We kind of got to kind of got to go. You know? We cleared it with the city, sir. Like the the owner may be passed, but you know with with that falling with no living will or no living uh, uh, descendant, then this falls into the, I'll check a notebook. <clears throat> this falls under the jurisdiction of the city itself. Uh, I'm understanding that they're the ones that pay your paycheck. Are they not? Paycheck? He doesn't get paid. You should, you? you should form a union. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to unionize with? The squirrels? Oh man, okay. There ain't uh, nothing but nothing on this property. Nothing but doom and damnation on these lands. And I suggest you get back in your vehicle and you go do yourself a, a piece on the dairy ripple. That building's been here. Christ, since- I am surrounded by children here. <laughs> All right. I am here to study the plant life, the moss that is growing on the side here. I'm going to bust out some sort of science-y stuff. I, right? I, kill, I kill the camera immediately. Uh, <laughs> uh, go, ahead and, uh, go ahead and roll science. Um, and so you're trying to kind of pull one over on this guy, right? Absolutely. So roll science and manipulation. Does that sound right? Uh, or is okay. there another, so, another trait you'd like to use apart from manipulation? You have to help me remember. So am I just rolling D10s? Yep, a number of D10s equal to the dots you have in science. And then if you have manipulation, if you want to use, or you could use presence, uh, you could use... Uh, manipulation is fine, okay. yeah. So uh, I have so, four in science and three in manipulation. Yep. So I'm for, seven. Yep, and you're looking for eights and better. Alex, what's your character's name again? Tobias. Tobias. I'm gonna lean over to Tobias. I'm like, did you get any? Like, did you get good B roll? Is that like that'll be a good opening for the student film, right? Oh yeah, that dude is uh, priceless gem. Absolutely, just that's like that's like professional grade horror movie trailer. Like the the old man just you can't be here. And look, um, this guy's what boring me, and so is she. How many? <laughs> how many did you get that were eight or better? I got a nine and I have to do two more because for some reason I can't get it to roll them all. Awesome. And a seven. I got a nine, two sixes, a seven, and then I got one one, and I think that might matter. That's fine. It does it, ones only matter if you get nothing that's a success. Oh, okay. Um so you succeed. He goes, All right, listen here. If you're here to study some moss, go ahead and pull yourself some moss off of that tree. I am going to go in and put out the lanterns and make sure that everything is buttoned up nice and tight. I would expect that you will not be here upon my return. He turns on his heel and starts limping away. I mean, if you walk that slow, we'll definitely not be here when you get back. (laughs) Fucking be dead. (laughs) We need to get inside the cabin itself, or do we, are we cool with, with just around the area? Are you kidding? You're kidding, right? But how are we going to get past him? He, he's gonna leave. He goes still to turn. We'll just walk around him. <laughs> we gotta hide the car. Okay, so we're gonna let me let me make sure I have a full understanding of this plan. Uh, we're gonna hide the car, stake him out, and wait for him to leave after he turns the lights out. Right. All right. That's all right. Sounds good. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish some homework. Oh my god. You're so- <laughs> The worst. All right, Science so gonna, is cool. So you're gonna try to hide the car. What's your plan for hiding the car? Are you gonna go off the property and, and park, or are you going to like try to pull into some of the shrubberies and cover it up? And just pull up the road a little bit, at least, and then like off the road, maybe. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to go traipsing through the woods for too long. But I mean, this guy's not going to be chasing anybody anytime soon. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> just go ahead and give me a pilot and uh dexterity roll if you don't mind 
because uh, you're taking a car off road that doesn't necessarily belong off road. Alex, right? No, you, you're driving. Oh, I didn't realize that. <laughs> Pilot and which one? Dexterity. Okay. All right. Hold on. <laughs> oh, I got one eight. Excellent. Um, you pull off the side of the road, um, pull down into kind of a ditch, uh, manage to not tip the car or anything. Um, it's a little nerve wracking, but you, you manage to pull down. You can see kind of over the lip, but you're pretty sure that nobody can see you. About 20 minutes passes. What would you like to do during that 20 minutes? Uh, I'm probably watching the house with my Zoom. Okay. Go ahead and give me, um, if you're looking through the Zoom of your camera, mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and give me an integrity and wits. Um, you're going to have a complication of three because it is uh, uh, long distance and very dark. Um, you know, I'll be murmuring to myself, kind of uh, taking in the scenery, thinking about uh, commentary, monologue, talking about the environment, all the, the tidbits of information. What am I rolling? Integrity, uh, integrity wits. Can I use, can I opt to use technology instead? Sure. Wits, you mean like cunning or like? Oh, yeah. Hard? Sorry, cunning. Woo. <laughs> I mean, I'm down, but I've got the wrong character sheets for that. So, my bad. All right. Target number is eight, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because we, we bad. <laughs> uh, that would be three successes. Uh, excellent. Oh, wait. That's so, the complication is so the complication, complication was three. three. So, you can buy off the complications. You're good. Okay. Um, you kind of see the lights starting to go out and you see through one of the lights uh, as he's like walking out of a room, you see kind of like a swinging, like a saloon door. Mm -hmm. um, and as the saloon door swings open, it looks like you see a slab of something red and huge hanging uh, in that room, sort of revealed by the flapping door for just a moment before the light extinguishes. Hey, this guy either butchers his own meat, or he's got a literal corpse hanging in that place. I mean, in order to get a corpse, you'd have to kill someone, which means you'd have to get close. We spell what came out of his mouth. He's not getting close to anybody. I'd be willing he to looks bet. like he butchers his own meat. What if he did it? Did, did what? The murder. The, wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be convenient? That doesn't make any sense. How's he going to chase anyone down to kill him? Well, that's an injury he got during the during the murder. Then yeah, we're safe because he's not going to catch us. Like, what's, what's the problem? I'm just saying. I'm just theorizing. Is this more of your science? Science <laughs> is cool. You all hear a crunching, <laughs> like a like a methodical, like rhythmic crunching noise, and uh, every few seconds within that crunching, you hear like a. And it's getting closer, uh, like it's coming at you from the cabin. The hell is that? Doom. Uh, I, uh, well, I can't. Is, is it is it dark yet? Uh, yes, it is. It is now uh, dusk. Okay. I mean, so. Do you have like a complication of two just trying to look with your naked eye and see what's going on? So I will. I mean, I'm going to step out of the car, obviously. <laughs> Um, and I will turn my light on, uh, okay. And point it in the direction that I hear the noise coming. Um, you point the light up at the road and you see the guy up ahead, uh, sort of look, uh, you see that he is riding a bicycle. That's got like the large front wheel on it. That's like probably about four or five feet up mm -hmm. rusty as fuck. Um, 
this tiny little tricycle. Tied to the back of the bicycle is uh, what looks like like a red rider wagon. Uh huh. Um, also rusty as fuck. And there's just like a tarp that's like a cloth tarp that's just covered in unidentifiable stains uh, over some lumpy mass in this red rider wagon that he's dragging behind him on his bicycle. Uh, I will, I just take it all in. Like this is, this is my moment. <laughs> like I could not have asked for a better shot and he's coming right at me. Coming right at you. Yes. I mean, Oh, capture the moment. Like he rides, I'm, I'm, I'm enthralled. <laughs> he like literally like rides right up to you. Like you are sort of pulled out of your revelry as the bicycle tire, like almost hits you in the jump. Uh, uh, Didn't I tell you? To get out of this property. Uh, so I dropped my you, calculator. We're looking for it. Hence the light. We'll be gone in a moment. Uh, what's a point at the wagon? What you what you got there, uh, Cletus? <laughs> I'm circling the wagon <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Now, I understand that none of y'all has any concept of personal property, but that is my personal property. And you will, I will, I will thank you kindly to get out of my face about it. Oh, I'm just so curious. Absolutely 100,000% <laughs> curious. Why, it's just dinner. He flips it back and you see that there's like some things rib cage, um, freshly skinned. It's still very moist. Uh, you see a couple of bugs crawling on it, is um, there, and he just fl- f- throws the tarp back over the top of it. Is there, um, we're in a foresty area, is there a large tree branch like that has fallen in this space at all? Sure. Uh, I'm just going to nudge Hawks and be like. <laughs> <laughs> Why, are you, uh, you hungry? Hawks. Get him. I don't know anymore. Uh because if you're if you're hungry, I'm I, I stay in the trailer park just about a mile up the road that way. It's the last trailer on the left. You feel free to come on through and I will feed you up. But do not go down this road. Do not go mess around that property. Oh, no, we'll be gone in two shakes or whatever the hell that is. Uh, says, well good luck with your search and he just throws a plug like it lands like next to the car and like you you all of you in the car hear like this meaty like thump when it hits the ground outside and uh, not only do you smell like this waft but you like taste like this waft of just like rotten meat man you're gonna need a new car <laughs> uh tell you what addiction is i used to dip and for some reason like there's a there's a there's some there's a grossness to this but it's also like man i could really use a child right now <laughs> no. and that kids is addiction <laughs> and that's why you shouldn't do any nicotine products my god i have no wrong. idea what you're talking about <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> he takes off riding again i mean i'm just i'm in awe did you want me to Take his bike over you. I wanted you to hit him in the head. I thought that that would be the he was getting out, he was on to us. He was trying to feed us dinner. I mean, like do I you wouldn't wanna, do you suggest eat, ingesting it, but no, yeah, but it's still no. nice. Uh go ahead and give me another cunning integrity roll if you don't mind there, uh Alex, since you're standing outside the car. Or Let's do that. Oh, wow, okay. What'd you get? Uh, four. Uh, you notice that plug that he threw on the ground, like moving a little bit. Yo, hey, 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 yo, hey. Ah. 
What is that? <laughs> it's you when your it? plug has to cut a rug. You see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, you see a uh, a little white wiggling uh, piece of vermin kind of poke out of the edge of the plug. I mean, I I get in yeah. real close. I gotta poke it. I get I get <laughs> I get the shot. Uh, it's definitely a maggot. Oh. So we definitely shouldn't eat what he's offering, but it was still nice. And you're reasonably sure now that you're inspecting it closely that while there is some tobacco in this plug, this is not all tobacco. Cletus meat chewer. That dude definitely kills people. <laughs> <laughs> Poor personal hygiene does not a mass murderer make. <laughs> Do you have an idea what could happen if you don't take care? Do you have an idea of the bacteria, the things that could happen if you have a maggot in your mouth? No, I mean, I don't see do the, your science. Did you see the bike he rides? He obviously doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> right, I mean, well, really, maggots are, they have nutritional value to them. You know, the, house is, the house is right there. Yo. You read, right. so you read our homework. <laughs> I know it's for biology. <laughs> really hope there's a really hope there's a toilet inside. <laughs> well, you want, you did want he leave? Kevin? Yeah, he's yeah, gone. Of course, yeah. of course, it's time. You should probably go up there. <laughs> yeah. This is why we're here. I mean, are you, are you walking up to the cabin, leaving the car where you're at, or are you going to pull up and drive up to the cabin? Well, I'm gonna walk up because I have my, I have my, uh, I have to, I have to be with my thoughts and like you know, communi- continue communicating and I offer my commentary as I approach. So, yes, I will artfully do so. What about the rest of you? Are you gonna uh, leave the car there? Uh, pull the car up? Uh, is anyone waiting back at the car? I think the car's fine. It's not like that far out of the way, is it? Oh no, probably a mile. Oh, it's a mile. A mile? Yeah. The car. Yeah. 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 We're bringing the oh, car. I thought we were like down the block. Okay. <laughs> well, you went up. You went up the uh, driveway, right? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So probably a mile, half a mile, maybe half mile. Yeah, we're bringing the car. Then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Didn't plan a hike. Okay. Uh, are you? As you pull up, there's clearly places. You know, there's spaces for a car to occupy. Um, When you get out, uh, you all notice a couple odd things. Like right next to where the cars are parked, uh, you see what appears to be a pile of, like a burn pile. Um, But you can definitely see like plastic limbs sticking out of it, like Barbie arms, things along those lines. Um, Everything does have kind of like this, a film of like dirt and age over it. It looks like this place hasn't really been disturbed much. Uh, recently you have a cabin front door there's a porch uh there's a barn and um well barn's probably a bit of a strong like a like a shed outside um and you can definitely see another uh one seat building outside that's the outhouse that is the outhouse okay i don't actually have to pee but (laughs) Right. It's good to know, just in case. Yeah. What um, would you all like I, to do? I would like to start humming. Dun, dun, I mean, dun, Garrett, dun, dun, this is uh, it's your show, right? I, you still didn't explain to me what you exactly wanted me to do. I, I, not all science is the same. I'm not a forensic investigator. I don't know. And it... I, what show? Open the damn door. <laughs> oh, 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 right, right. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll open the door. Uh, you go over to the door. Uh, there is a lock on it. Uh, it's just like a, a flip lock with a, a master lock pad key on it. Uh, the, the, the padlock is like rust. Sh- it's like a, a 
piece of rust shaped vaguely like a padlock. Does anyone have a hairpin or uh, uh, possibly a file or or? Uh, I I I think I got it. Hold on, I'll pull out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's my pocket protecting my other pants. <laughs> I'll pull out my handy dandy Swiss Army knife. All right. Uh, uh, go ahead and give me a larceny and dexterity, please. Right on. Oh, wow. Target number is eight, yeah? Target number is eight. Right on. That's two. Excellent. You dig around and, like, there's rust, like, flaking off like an entire face of the lock flakes off and you can see like the the beat up metal beneath it uh but you do get the lock to eventually give see science is cool all you needed to do was find the weak point there are certain sounds that the inner mechanisms make uh and i'm serious no this is this is all just research yeah no that you're you're one of the closest friends that's not just like robert and like no shame in your game, but you you just broke in. No, That's this is works. science. The door swings open slowly. Mm. Uh, you notice the place is hoarded is a strong term, but it's heavily packed with things. Um, you see there's photo albums. Um, there's oil paintings that all have like a layer of dust on them. Uh, some photos like in um, frames, like on the mantle, uh, some hanging on the walls, all of them thick layer of dust, very difficult to see through. Um, you can see there's stacks of like old 1970s TV guides that go up about waist high. Uh, there's a couple of couches, there's a couch, a love seat, and a recliner. Um, all of them seem to have a, a strange uh, patchwork upholstery on them. Um, you see, uh, the other thing you notice is there's kind of a chandelier in this main room, but it appears to, rather than having lights on it, it appears to have various different pieces of animal bone dangling from it, like a bone mobile, mobile um, that takes up about, it hangs over about a third of the living room. Um, past there, you can see there's the saloon style doors that go back into what you're assuming is the kitchen. Um, and then there are there's a hallway that has three doors. Where do I think that? Where was the meat room? Uh, the past the saloon doors. Okay. All right. So I saw these doors from outside. Isn't that chandelier gnarly? I'm gonna lean over to Hawks and be like, "I guess the caretaker hasn't been taking care, right?" Oh, so can, can I write that down? I'm not, I'm not gonna steal. I just wanna. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, I, I didn't know if it was. I I didn't know if it was gonna be funny or not. I just. I don't know. I went for it. That was great. You got like, like speak straight from your chest, like really like pronounced. Like, oh, yeah, I was going to say it louder so everyone could hear it, but I didn't know. I just <laughs> wanted to run it by you first. Yeah, like right, thumbs up for me. Thumbs up. I'm going to write it down in my notebook. <laughs> Excellent. Are you opening the, or, or looking over the saloon doors or going open? Yeah, them I'm, or... I'm going to walk over to them. Yeah. All right. Uh, you see something. Um, go ahead and give me a, a medicine or survival, whichever you prefer. Um, and, and either uh, cunning or intellect. Okay. Uh, one so far, we see two. You're fairly certain that whatever that is that's hanging there uh, is at least humanoid uh it's hard to tell there's no skin most of the meat has been taken off um but it is uh sort of strapped to the ceiling uh by a pair of crossed limbs like so um again uh skinned and there doesn't appear it looks like there's almost like bags of some sort over the ends so you can't tell if it's hands or hooves um and then it looks like just if you didn't know anybody, you'd say human torso down to the waist. Why did they do that? There's no head. Why did they do that? 
head over to Tobias and be like, hey, Tobias, I guess the caretaker hasn't been taking care, right? Why what? did they do that? <laughs> what is that? Um, but about that time, you all see a set of headlights come pouring in through the window uh, of the front as if someone is pulling into the uh, driveway in a vehicle. Oh, shit. We better hide. He's coming. That was two quips, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the quips. Excellent. Uh, you may have a... My plus. first line that I used was one of mine. Uh, oh, beautiful. You have to call your quip when you use them so I know when to give you the bonuses. So oh, uh, you will have a plus one on two your next two rolls if you use two different quips, Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, and you will have a plus one on your next roll. Uh, that's plus one enhancement, not plus dice. Mm. Um, nice. Are you going to all hide, Ben? Uh, Do yeah. we all see the vaguely human-like torso? Uh, if you walk over close enough to the kitchen, otherwise you definitely hear those two like sort of, why did he do that? Why did he do that? Yeah. Okay, they, they freak out all the time. Um, if they hide, I will follow suit, but other than that, I'm staying. Uh, there's plenty of, uh, you said there's horde stuff everywhere, right? Yes. Shit, the car's out there, though. Oh, no. Oh no. What if they slash our tires? Oh no. Uh how big is that chandelier? I mean, it's like uh you said, it, you said it covers a third of the room, right? Right. But I mean it's like like wicker work that okay. has bones hanging off of it. Mm, um, gotcha. It's not like heavy. Okay. Um, did we see any stairs or anything? Oh, it's a cabin, right? Yeah, there's no stairs. There's a back door through the kitchen. There's that hallway. It's got three doors in it. Um, 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 uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm going to hide. Can you describe hiding places that are close to me? Uh, sure. You could go down and jump into one of those rooms. Uh, you could get down. Uh, like You're pretty sure you could squeeze down under the couch because um, it's, it's kind of raised a little bit. Um, and you think there's a pile that's big enough that you think you could maybe a pile of like books and boxes that you think you maybe you could hide behind. I'll go under the couch. All right, go ahead and give me a larceny and uh, dexterity roll and go ahead and you have a plus one enhancement on this. So whatever your number of successes is, as long as you get one success or more, you can add one to the success number. Larceny is a zero. Dexterity is a one. So here we go. <laughs> Oh my god, I got the nine. All right, you you like drop and like scoot all the way across. Um you what notice you there's like a um a slickness to this flooring. Oh gross. I'm not even gonna think about it. <laughs> if you if you ask me what I'm doing, I am hiding because this can't go on my permanent record. I have places to be. <laughs> Garrett, what are you doing? Panicking. Um uh I uh, I, this is dumb. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to hide behind. Uh, you said there were oil paintings, layer of dust. I'm going to wedge myself between if it's up against the wall. Sure. Uh, roll it's larceny, like uh, dexterity. You have a complication of two because uh, there is no painting that's big enough to cover your body. Shit. <laughs> uh, zero. No successes. And there's a one. I don't know if there's boxes. That's a, that's a botch. Yeah. So you, have, you gain two rewrites. Congratulations. Sick. Thanks. You are pretty sure you're hidden. Uh, I think they're all bad shit. And I, I, I murmured to myself, fuck this shit. And I go through the saloon doors and I'm going to try to go out the back, um, the kitchen. I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at Hawk, like what the hell are they doing? And I'm going to try to get out. All right. Excellent. Uh, you run out the back doors. Um, go ahead and give me a, uh, let's do integrity. And whatever uh, mental attribute you'd like to lean on for this. Okay. Uh, integrity and I'll say cunning. Sure. Two. Excellent. Hawk, are you following right behind? Oh, absolutely, yeah. 
go ahead and give me a integrity roll as well with uh, the appropriate traits. Oh, I get plus one enhancement. So that was three. Uh, three, yeah. Because I quit. <laughs> yeah, it's a zero. Zero, excellent. Um, I'm going to get, since you have three successes, uh, you can use one to notice this. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have two successes left to spend on how you'd like to react to it. As soon as you two start breaking out the back door, you just about step in uh, a bear trap. And you see Hawk is like going for it. Like you, you like everything slows down and you see Hawk's leg like going into that bear trap. Uh, I will say, uh, no way. <laughs> and i will i will kick him in the hips i guess i'll try to get him away from like i want to excellent I'll, I'll kick him all right so you spend two successes to kick him uh hawk you fall on the ground ow why does you bear trap bear oh. trap yeah that's why thank you thank you and you put your hand down to get up and you feel like it's going to something moist like mud or or like um pull pull back up all right, there's like a kind of sound as you pull it out and you see like bits of meat fall off. What are you doing? Get up. Yep, yep, gotta get up. Just You hear the engine kill out front. Shit. The hell are people doing out here? Who the fuck? Jimmy, Jimmy put her down. No, listen, Jimmy, you need to leave her alone. Aunt Betty's gonna lose her shit. All right, put her down. Put her down. Yeah, no, listen, we'll get you a new one. Like that one was for dinner. Um, I will uh I'm gonna get low and I'll I'll skulk around the back of the house to see if I can get a view of the kind of the, the area in front. Give me a larceny and uh cunning. Can I yeah, can I for Dex? Is that okay? Uh yes. That's fine. You're just gonna. Um, you're leaning more on hiding than seeing at that point, though. Oh, okay. Then yeah, we'll do the other one. You still have a plus one enhancement from your other clip. That's true. That's true. All right, let's go for it. Let's go for it. We'll see if we can nail both. Oh, and you, you also get another re-rate for Chaz failing that dice roll. <clears throat> nice. Okay, four. Excellent. Uh, you creep around and you see um, this guy, uh, he's about six foot two, probably 140 pounds dripping wet. Um, he's wearing a sleeveless white undershirt um, that you only recognize as white based on its shape. Uh, it is just covered in, in sort of various technicolor stains and whatnot, all of them faded. Um, he has short close cropped uh, black hair, a goatee, and then facial growth looks like he hasn't shaved around it in a, about a week, probably. He's wearing very, very dirty jeans. Um, and it looks like he's, he's got stains all over his hands and about halfway up his forearm, either stains or fresh fluid of some sort. Um, he's holding a four-way tire iron and yelling at a guy that's in the back of this pickup truck that they're driving, this rusty like 78 Dodge Ram pickup truck. Um, the guy that he's yelling at is about 5'8", probably about 350 pounds, um, wearing the same roughly kind of shirt, um, which is much messier. And it's kind of like up over his gut. So his stomach is just kind of hanging out a little bit. Um, he's got jeans around his knees right now and is like trying to pull them up he's got very patchy hair that's probably about chin length uh kind of hanging down in his face and he's kind of scrambling in a circle trying to pull his pants up and looking at the other guy and just going Aah! i'm definitely definitely capturing this for posterity and i'm being very very quiet <laughs> the other guy says i told you to leave her the hell alone jimmy we have work to do and he just, with that, he fucking smashes out the windshield of your car. I know somebody's out here. Ali, Ali, Oxen, Free. 
Um, I will look back at uh, Hawk and give him the give him the hush. You know, one thing that I've always loved about the family cabin is it's far too far away from town for anybody to hear any folks screaming. <laughs> Shut it, Jimmy. So I'll make you a deal. Come out here, time I count to five, and I'll kill you quick. One, two, uh, everybody go ahead and roll uh, cunning and integrity real quick. Got it. That's another zero. Oh my God. No, three tens count as two. Uh, three. That's two. Excellent. Um, I got three eights. Excellent. So you can all, except for um, mm -hmm. Hawk, uh, clock where he's moving. Um, you hear like the creak of him stepping onto the porch, the slight whine of the uh, hinges of the front door. And his foot falls on the um, wood flooring of the cabin. From where you're laying, Allie, you can see like these Doc Martens, these like shit crusted, falling apart at the seams Doc Martens come stepping kind of into your frame of view, walking straight for those paintings. Three. Um, I'm once he's inside, I'm going to start working my way toward the car. All right. Um, give me a uh, cunning and uh, integrity or survival. Tens or two. Is that, is that how this works? Tens count as two successes. Yeah. Right, so five. Excellent. You're sneaking around and you see um, the dude that was in the back of the truck uh, is no longer in the back of the truck. Uh, he is like behind the car, like matching your movement, staring mm -hmm. right at you. Uh, I will probably freeze because <laughs> that's what prey does. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, he goes four, and then you hear a tearing sound. Uh, Gilbert, what would you like to rely on for your defense? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, in regards to skills or attributes, uh, um, attrib attributes, um, uh. Uh, I, I'd love to re rely on my dexterity. I think uh, you have you have you have to use a resilience attribute. So gotcha, gotcha. Stamina it is then. I think. Um, right. so see if you're tough enough to take it. Oh god, that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, sure. Go ahead and give it a shot. Sounds good. Hey, I got a, a single success. That's better than I thought I was going to do. You see the boots make their way over to the paintings he goes four you hear tearing um gilbert you take seven levels of health of damage um, as he takes that four-way tire iron and drives it into your eye <laughs> I'm fucking dead <laughs> <laughs> you're fucking dead <laughs> Yo! <laughs> um, so as you're marking your damage and uh, they came from uh, Camp Murder Lake, you'll notice on your character sheet, uh, you have several health levels. 
Mm -hmm. um, you start at the lowest one, and once you fill that up, you move along to the next until you run out of health levels that you've taken. Do you have 10? So you're not dead. You're just no. really pissed. That'll leave a scar. <laughs> Shit. Um, well, we said seven? seven? No, it's last dish effort. Yeah. Yep. So now what happens is uh, because when you are wounded and they came from, uh, you become slightly more competent. You actually get bonus dice. Um, so you will get plus two to any of your dice rolls, plus three to any of your dice rolls that involve your archetype skill. Or archetype skills, I should say. Right on. Uh, um, so, uh, however, if you uh, use that bonus, you take an additional level of that health level. Right. Gotcha. Was there screaming? Oh, absolutely! fucking lootly What? <laughs> crowbar jammed yeah. into my head, dude. Yeah, you hear the screaming. You hear, like, you can hear the blood, like, hitting the floor and see it like raining down in front of you, Allie. As he like kicks through the painting, you see his feet sort of squirming. You see his feet squirming first, like going across the ground and then like kicking freely as he's apparently being hoisted. Um, what would you like to do? Me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna cover my mouth so I don't scream. Uh, is there anything like you said, it's kind of like a hoarder's house. Is there anything under the couch with me that's like I could use to defend myself? Well, um, why don't you go ahead and uh, well, as you're rolling, as you're as you're looking around, um, you see a couple things under the couch. First of all, you see what you're pretty sure is um, a amateur taxidermied cat. Mm. looks like it was sewn together by like a child but it also looks oh. like it was made from an actual cat um and you see like the handle uh of like you look you think it's either a lamp or something wooden at the edge of the couch it looks like a, a standing lamp maybe or maybe like one of those old ashtray containers from the 1980s I don't know if an ashtray can be a weapon. Well, the ones that were on the, you'd have like a, a wooden stand that's like waist high that would have like oh, okay. a big pan ashtray on it. I can tell you with no culpability that they can be. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank I'll show you a scar sometime. <laughs> um, but it's not under the couch. You said it's leaning on the couch. It's standing next to the couch. So you'd have to get out from under the couch to be able to, to grab it. Okay. However, I'm you just can, gonna be you can get your hands on that cat if you want to. I'm gonna pass on the cat. Right, I don't so. think it's very weapony. It's probably soft. <laughs> so for now, you're just gonna wait. I'm going to try not to move or be seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Excellent. Uh, what are you doing where you are at, Chaz? So. I have no clue where any of the murderers are, and I just heard Garrick scream. Yes. Yeah, we're getting up, we're booking it. Like that, that seems like the most logical thing to do. Um, what, are, what are you running toward? That is much more logic than I think Hawks has at the moment. He's running forward. Excellent. So you come running, going straight past uh, Tobias, right? Mm -hmm. um, and straight toward the car. Yeah, that's not about right. Um, <laughs> you see this sort of fat dude reach down and pull the um, hubcap off your car, roll it, and That's... throw it at dude while dude's running up at him. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> he built different. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Chad, I have a question. Sure. How do tropes work. Uh, you they're uh, covered within the rule of the trope itself. So, um, which trope are you thinking of activating? Uh, be right back. Okay, what does that do? Be right back, or I'll be right back. Once per game session, you may choose to come up with an excuse for leaving a scene you're in. 
it successfully lets you leave no matter how difficult leaving the scene would normally be. <laughs> you fucking dip out. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna go. <laughs> you fucking kidding me right now? What, what's your excuse? Uh, my excuse? Uh, Garrett made a hilarious joke and I feel like I need to step my game up so I need to go home, read some of my comedy books and then come back when I have my comedy game a little stronger. So he slaps, like you see this like spear that this dude made from a hubcap go flying forward at your friend who is running into it. And he just slaps it out of the way and says, I got to go home and take some notes and runs off. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Upload. <laughs> As you pan over with the camera, you're like, yes, yes. You pan back and you see just a fist filling the, the oh, space no. of, the, of the camera. How would you like to resist this? Just, well, one, did I get to upload? <laughs> uh, we'll see. Okay. Um, then I will use my uh, composure. All right. Go ahead. And uh, dexterity because I have to protect the camera. All right, go ahead. No, it's just straight composure. It's just oh, okay. Do, do, do. Two. Excellent. You like swoop back, hit the upload button, and see him like take out one of the beams that's holding up the um the porch. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, I will yell, <laughs> um, call nurse Becky as I <laughs> run back toward, I'm running away from him, uh, back toward the bear trap, I guess. All right. Excellent. So you start circling back around the, the yeah. back of the cabin. Gilbert, what are you doing? Uh, you are about a foot off the ground with uh, a tire iron. Uh, inconveniently in your ocular cavity and you yeah. can feel it fucking like, my brain matter no like poking out of the back of your skull like you're sure that it's touching the wall behind you uh by some miracle you have not yet expired outstanding um i don't see me getting out of this uh so oh god uh he he's holding me up by this thing right yeah, like so he he drove it through and then kind of pushed it in and is now like lifting you off the ground by it. Oh man, I don't think there's any way I can do damage to this dude either. Um I mean you could try to kick him in his junk. Yeah, I'm gonna kick him in the junk. Wolfman's got knives. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Uh Give me a close combat. Oh <laughs> uh <laughs> all right. Um, any attribute, any physical attribute? Anyone you like. Um, and uh, remember, you need, if it's not one of your archetype skills, you still get plus two if you want to take the I extra know. health level. Uh, just plus two dice? Right, you will suffer another health level of damage if you do that. I'm totally all right with that. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay, so among all of the ones, there is a single eight. <laughs> all right. <laughs> my single gift from God. I'm pretty sure that was my miracle. <laughs> Yes. Uh, you kick him in his in his nuts and he like backs up and like doubles over and like knocks over some furniture as he as he backs away from you um, creating a perfect distraction and opportunity what would you like to do Ali? <laughs> uh, um so where did he fall like where's the couch and where did he fall uh, he's like directly in front of you uh, with his side. Like you're, you're looking at him like a 180 degree angle. He sort of backed into the door. Okay. Can I, ex so if he's in front of the couch, can I exit from behind the couch? Uh, no, no. Cause you'd be up against the wall, but you can like shoot out the top. Like, so you'd basically be shooting out like the side of the couch. You'll have to knock that thing out of your way or, or, or move the ashtray, but you can go out that way, uh, going towards the hallway. Or you could just roll out from underneath and get up, but you would be rolling toward him. Okay, I think I'm going to try to use one of my tropes. What trope you have to like explain to me how to use this one. Sure. All according to plan. 
Okay, what, go ahead and read the trope to me. So it says, you've always got a dedicated plan for every situation once per story when you describe your elaborate, extremely dangerous, or generally foolish plan, you can initiate a montage. <laughs> every character involved receives one extra try at a milestone. Um, what sort of montage are you going to try to kick off in the middle of a combat scene? Okay, so a montage is like the Scooby-Doo where they go through all the doors, right? Uh, a montage is more like in a, like an 80s uh, teen movie where somebody learns a new skill or builds something amazing. Like we got to study for the test, guys, and then it just cuts to them reading books, writing things. <laughs> right, in different rooms. Taking a sip of orange juice and then mm. like wiping sweat from their brow as they're... <laughs> hitting right. the books some person gives up that i was like no no, you got this and they go again no i'm not saying right. you can't utilize a montage right now i just want to see how we're going to cut that into the <laughs> no i don't think we can <laughs> <laughs> i thought that we could get through the doors like the scooby-doo people so that was <laughs> <laughs> no that but was that would be goal. dope um <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just gonna get out of the couch try to hit him with the ashtray and do i see uh Tobias running back in the house? No, not yet. So I I feel like I would try to go that way if I don't see him. All right, so you're going to try to like sort of hit him with the ashtray and plow past? Uh, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead and roll close combat and then whatever physical uh, attribute you'd like to rely on. All right, I will do close combat and can I do intellect? Uh, Sure, yeah. Yeah, like you, you, you like you know where his weak spot is, so you're gonna try to hit him there. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Nine, nine, eight. Excellent. You get up and like clock him straight in the temple. Um, he uh, spits out some blood, stumbles to the side, and goes, "What the hell?" Um, giving you enough room to. Uh, run past if you like. However, you do clock now that your friend is still pinned to the wall um, about a foot off the ground. And uh, still like, and he's like doing this shit. <laughs> may, please, may, may please don't leave me, please. Friend this is a strong word. I, well, <laughs> sadly, Gilbert's one of my friends that I actually like. So I, I, will, I will take the crowbar out of his face. It's a four-way tire, Aaron, but sure. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll medicine plus might, please. Oh God! Medicine plus might. Okay, hey, got a second. We got nothing in medicine. We got we got one chance here. <laughs> Is there any way I can help her? I know this sounds ridiculous. <laughs> Stop wiggling. <laughs> oh, down! You got a ten. I got a ten. Excellent. That counts as two successes. Uh, I'm you, so strong. You pull like straight back. Oh. Um, and uh, there's a kind of sound um, as his eyeball just goes, but oh, not no. like not, not like bursts, like goes flying out past like off of the edge of his uh, ocular cavity, shoots forward about three feet. Um, until it hits the end of the optic nerve and then sort of flies back like one of those paddle balls. <laughs> and that's when it bursts on his face. Um, so I would like both of you uh, to please give me like a resolve <laughs> roll, please. <laughs> <laughs> straight, straight resolve. Yeah, straight resolve. Copy. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know what? You can add, uh, resolve integrity. Yeah. Nope, let me see what my integrity is. Uh, one success. All right. You have your wits about you enough that you're not going to be penalized during the next... No, thank God. I got one success, too. You also have your wits about you enough that you're not going to be penalized. You don't, like, throw up or anything. Outside, what would you like to be doing right now, Tobias? Uh, so I, I'm being chased. So, um, and there was screaming inside the house. I feel like 
okay, I have an idea. I would like to spend a rewrite for running like hell. Can I do, can I do that? <laughs> running like hell is one of your uh, trademarks or is it? It's one of the, it's one of the, oh, the, the things. Favorite stunts. One of the cinematics? Of the yeah, yeah. Okay. So it uh, says so- spend a rewrite and it says, um, uh, if you're attempting to escape, purchasing the cinematic gives you plus two enhancement. However, any action the player or character takes that doesn't involve running away gains one complication of focused on right. running. You try and find your keys, fight back, do anything else. You don't buy off a complication. You trip and fall. Um, yeah. So my thought is, I feel like me and this large gentleman, because I'm I'm a you know a bit of a of a wayfish director. Sure. Um, live. So I'm going to try to. I'm going to go back through the house. And I'm going to try to wind through and around this problem that we're having um, as, as deftly as possible. Right. Uh, as long as the group is okay with you spending that uh, rewrite, you may do so. Right. You guys okay with running like hell? All right. Uh, you go running around, you zip in the back door where you immediately meet. Uh, well, actually, I'll get back to you in just a moment. Okay. You zip into the back door. Okay. Um, back inside, we have, uh, you're both free now, but you've not been able to move yet. Uh, so this guy is going to get up and say, you want something done right? And he pulls a, just a remarkably large hunting knife out of his boot and is going to lunge forward toward uh, Gilbert with it. Bob and Reeve Gilbert. Uh, you notice he's not coming at you high, though. <clears throat> yeah. yeah that's um, he lunges past you, uh, past your waist. You feel like the flat of the blade go across like your lower stomach. This dude was just trying to neuter you. Oh! Yeah. Oh yeah, and we're we're not fighting at all. I'm fucking outie, dude. No, <laughs> games are over. Like, Excellent. so you take off running toward the back door, correct? Uh yeah. I'm gonna yeah. scream for me to follow, but I'm not. Uh, is, I don't is, look. There's only so far as friendship goes. All right. <laughs> so you're you're run, you're running and you're screaming for me to follow, but you're also like blocking her way, basically, right? Like you're 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 getting out first. I, I mean. As shitty as it sounds, absolutely. You just tried to. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. There's a visceral reaction. A primitive, just, just bestial reaction here. This is ingrained into and my DNA. What is May trying to do? Um, she's offended. First off, I just pulled a freaking tire iron out of your face and that's how I'm saying because you're pushing me out of the way you know save uh, my manhood back on too is that what like we got shit to maybe, do maybe <laughs> should we go find your eye and just do the whole thing <laughs> um do I still have the ashtray or did I throw it at him I think you probably uh, have the tire iron <laughs> you have the tire iron right now <laughs> oh okay uh, I will Throw it at him. The tire? Yeah. All right, roll like aim. A, like a ninja star. Roll roll aim and might. That's gonna be hilarious. <laughs> okay. Aim. Oh boy. And might. I'm not gonna be Oop, I got a two. <laughs> so no successes? Nope. Excellent. You th- you go to throw the tire and it sort of slips out of your hand because it's slick with blood um, and flies out the window. It doesn't hurt you, doesn't hurt and doesn't give him a weapon, um, but it, it, you have you do not have it either. Uh, he just steps up close to you um, and says, well, aren't you just a tasty little thing and bites your face. Oh, God. Uh, Tobias, you run in the back door and run directly into uh, Garrett, who is missing an eye. <laughs> and there's just kind of like this spaghetti sort of uh, horrific nonsense hanging out of the side of his face. Um, 
how which resilience attribute would you like to rely on to avoid this bite? Um, stamina. All right, go ahead and roll stamina. Two eights. Excellent. You take six points of damage um, as he like bites right under your your left eye and like peels away the the skin over your cheekbone. And like, Ugh. it's gone. Like you see him like pull and start chewing. Blah. You said would, six? Yep, six points. Oh. What would you like to do there, uh, Tobias, as you see this? Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say, I'd rather not. <laughs> I want to blow right on by. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going further into the uh, cabin? Well, but the, am I? So you, I happen upon Garrett, right? Yes. I'm going to try to draw his attention to the fact that I'm being chased by a huge human. I was going to yell, he's coming, but I also figured I was going to see somebody's face get ripped off. So I'm like, he's coming! And scream. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I was planning on leading this thing through the house, and I don't really... I can't really stop running now. <laughs> so I'm committed to the plan. So if I, if I have to run by someone with their face getting ripped off, I will feel much pity and sadness. But uh, the question is, do I want to capture it on camera? Have I captured a tragedy yet? I don't think I have. I feel like I'm properly motivated. I'm going to take the complication and I'm going to try <laughs> to also record her pace as I run by. So you're squeezing right past uh, Garrett and trying to record May's face as you run out past her out the front door. That's the plan, yes. Excellent. Um, go ahead and make a, um, let's say humanities and uh, dexterity. Sure. Um, yeah. I know a complication of focused on running. All right. All right. Hold up. There's a one point complication, right? But I get plus two enhancement to do anything involving running. That's the that's the, that's the way it goes. Yes, but this is okay. not. This doesn't count as running. Right. This, in yeah. fact, has the complication. Yes. So I have three minus one to buy out the complication. So two. Excellent. You get to, a, to not fall. On my face. You get a beautiful shot. I mean, it is Oscar winning. You are absolutely sure it's going to be perfect. Um, as you come zipping out toward the front door. Um, and you see movement in the corner of your eye. As you cross the threshold of the front door. Uh -huh. And you realize that that movement is what appears to be like a chunk of cinder block with tied to a chain that just is swinging into your face as you come oh, running through. <laughs> lovely. Okay. Awesome. I guess I'm going to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and give me a stamina roll if you don't mind. Sure. This, I'm guessing my call with nurse Becky is, uh, is live at this point. Yeah, who, you're calling Nurse Becky. It's my sister. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, three. Uh, excellent. You uh, like roll with it as much as one can a cinder block to the face um, and uh, suffer only four points of damage uh, as this thing hits you like square in the nose. Oh, uh, okay. And you see it's the, the heavy set dude standing there like holding this it's probably about an eight foot long length of chain like swinging the cinder block oh you're Woo! fast <laughs> <laughs> um i uh i mean i'm guessing that knocked me off my feet right <laughs> i'm guessing like i kind of you stumble yeah. but okay. you're still running yeah you have not um oh fuck i just realized that may has the keys <laughs> when he filmed that shot i definitely gave him the finger 
I'll get back to you all in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Chez, mm -hmm. you have run all the way to the, the highway. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> a car pulls up like a Subaru grocery getter station wagon. Uh, there's a woman with uh, red hair wearing kind of a nice floral print dress. Um, looks like she's probably in her 40s, maybe 50s. Uh, sitting in the back seat is a little girl, probably five or six years old, uh, playing with a Barbie doll. This woman sort of pulls over and says, excuse me, sir, are you okay? Yeah, I, I, my friend told this amazing, oh shit, he might be dead. Dead? Sounds like you got an emergency on your hands. Have you uh, seen that? cabin down in the woods you know the one with the, the the things the cabin in the woods are you talking about the old baker place yeah oh my goodness get in this car let's get you some help oh yeah i'm gonna jump on in excellent you get in the car and like buckle your seat belt and look up and you see the barrel of a 357 magnum in your face so you're not going to help me are you daisy sweetie close your eyes no daisy keep your eyes open you see this. <laughs> <laughs> uh go ahead and roll stamina for me real quick stamina. i don't think you have any stamina oh shit you have a lot of stamina daisy sweetie close your eyes <laughs> <laughs> One success. Excellent. Um, you can just go ahead and mark all your health levels and we'll get back to you in a minute. Yeah. Um, back inside. What are you doing? Uh, I guess we'll pick up with uh, Garrett. What are you doing? Well, I don't want to be that much of a dick. If May's getting her face chewed off. <laughs> I mean, I'm you're gonna... running out the back door right now. Oh, fuck. Um, You've already said F me. <laughs> it's going to be hard to go back. It is going to be hard. Yeah. If, if you want to um, turn around, you're welcome to do so. I mean, it, you're in charge. Back door. Is there any Is there any type of weapon near me? Anything that I can use as a makeshift, either a blunt object or a, maybe like a discarded... I mean, you're in the kitchen, so oh, there's... too easy. Yeah. I'm gonna grab whatever is closest to me. You grab um, a steak knife. Too easy. I'm gonna. I hear. I'm hearing uh, May's screams. I'm gonna rush back in. I'm just talking to myself. All right, you got this. You can do this. You're a hero, right? <laughs> the nerdy guys always get at the end, and I'm gonna try to bury the steak knife in the back of this dude's head. All right, go ahead and make your uh, close combat check. Oh God. That's a botch. Oh. Uh, you lunge forward, um, and he's looking you in the eyes, May, and chewing on this uh, piece of your cheek, just smiling. You pretty little, pretty little thing. And you see, like, in your peripheral vision, you see uh, Garrett, like, lunge forward, knife first. And this dude just reaches up, grabs his wrist, and like bends his hand back 180 degrees and shoves the knife into the other eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, <laughs> is there anything you'd like to do for your death scene? Um, I'd like to use scrawled revelation. If I could. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please tell me what scroll the revelation is. Uh, in death, you're able to get one last message out to your friends. This might be what they need to save themselves during your death scene. You may declare that you are leaving a message which, which functions as if it were a player-created clue after a successful investigation roll. Um, this message is either a fact about the killer or a hint towards a core clue, such as a means of stopping them. Uh, I don't think I have any means or like any clues about <laughs> the why or, or you know... Uh, 
or, or how to stop them. Um, so, so if I could, I'd just like to scrawl out cannibals or as much as the word cannibals as I can. <laughs> you write ca- cannibals uh, on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and uh, bleed out in a hurry. Um, May, what would you like to do? Is, is he holding me there or he's just eating my cheek? He's just eating your cheek right now. He used both of his hands to uh, kill your friend. Uh, I am in shock. Did I see what happened to Tobias to too? No, you were probably a little like you saw Tobias run out and heard some commotion out there, but you're probably a little oh, bit okay. too concerned with the missing piece of your face. Okay. I'm gonna like, kick him in the nuts and try to run. Excellent. So it's a good solid move. Go ahead and roll your close combat. <laughs> uh, whatever, my if you need it. <laughs> whatever physical ability you would like to rely upon. Close combat, and we'll go back to intellect because I feel like that was a smart choice. Okay, one success. <laughs> Excellent. Um, you reach up and kick him, and he sort of stumbles back a little bit. It doesn't quite double over, but you have enough room that you can squeeze past him. I'm going to make a run for it. You going to the front or the back door? I am. Which which one has like a clear path from where I'm standing? Whichever you can, one's you can turn away from him and go to the back door and not have to cross him. If you go to the I'll front door, you the will. Door then. Excellent. Go ahead and give me a, a integrity and cunning roll, please. No success. Excellent. One, one. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, you gain two more rewrites for the rewrite pool. Yay. As you run out the back door and take four levels of damage and are caught in a bear trap. <laughs> <laughs> How many rewrites do we have now? I've lost track after like <laughs> I've only used one. No, you've, used, so, uh, you've used two. I, used I got one. all the way. You used one and, and Chaz used one. Oh, okay. Yep, so that means that, that you can uh, basically, if you want to get uh, a plus three to your next action, you can kick off a death scene. Or you can oh. just keep operating at the level you're at. Okay, okay. Um, Alex, what are you doing? As you hear, like, snap. <laughs> uh, I will... Um... You know, I'll, I I guess I can try to I'm gonna try I'm gonna try to use this. I'm going to uh play into the hit as I as I took it, and I'm going to over dramatize my um the amount of of trauma I took to the face. Excellent. And, and I'm going to die. All right. Uh, give me a let's say humanities manipulation. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use my playing dead trope. Oh, excellent. Um, um, it says once per story when you were on any health level except don't forget me uh, and take damage. So I'm assuming that means not not damaged as well. Right. You may choose to die. Play this out as your real death scene. Your would be murderer believes you are dead, and no one can harm you for the rest of the scene. You may only receive first aid when the scene is over. <laughs> I'm assuming that means they're gonna eat me later, but. I get to maintain my recording in the call with my sister. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, she's panicked. You hear screaming on the other line uh, as you're laying there playing dead. And the killer sort of sniffs your face and then looks up uh, as you hear a car pulling onto the property. Chess, you gain consciousness at don't, for, at don't Forget Me in the trunk of this car. 
Now it is a grocery getter. So it's an open, like you can see what's going on mm -hmm. and you see, you hear like a woman screaming. You see this little girl sort of like from behind pressed up against the glass, looking out the window, whatever's happening. What would you like to do? I'm assuming I am some sort of tied up. No. I'm assuming I cannot leave the trunk. You can sit up. I mean, you're you're you've been shot in the head. Right. So like uh, I'm not not doing great. You're not doing good. Um, but you can uh sort of navigate and like move things. Okay. Well, we're going to make for once again the thing that never fails me we're going to make for a direction um because we 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 should have listened we should have listened and now it's too late uh you get out of the car and you start stumbling uh you can also see this kind of out of the corner of your eye uh tobias um as you uh, your friend gets out of the back seat stumbling you can see like an exit wound leaking blood out of the back of his head. This little girl gets out and says, hey, hey, you shouldn't go anywhere. Mommy says if you get hurt in the head, you shouldn't move. Damn. <laughs> There's a small, like the, the former <laughs> teacher of me is like, you have to reinforce this good behavior. <laughs> <laughs> you, you hear the woman yell, Daisy, you get back in that car and leave him alone. Jesus, listen to your mom. I got to do everything around here. You see uh, another set of lights pull in. Another pickup truck. Oh, this is. Uh, Go ahead yeah. and uh, you can roll. I'm going to give you an opportunity to roll. So you can either like kick off a death scene and do something fantastic on your as you're as you're rolling, or you can just try to get out of the way. But this truck is going to hit you. Um, considering what I'm going to kick off a death, death scene, I want to throw myself like somehow into the innards of the truck. Excellent. You're like, you won't take my friends and you fling yourself toward the truck. Yeah. The truck hits you and you explode. You explode like the dude in RoboCop who fell into the toxic yeah. waste pit. <laughs> like, you just gib everywhere. Um, there's just a spray of mist. This causes the, the truck driver to lose control of the truck and go barreling into the house. Um, this runs over the corpse that was in the living room, miraculously misses the fellow that was on the uh, porch, and... Um, comes out through the back of the cabin, uh, running over the poor lady that's stuck in a bear trap. The cabin bursts into flames. Yeah. The camera backs out, craning upward, as we see this little girl limply holding her Barbie doll staring into the fire as her family's bodies and the bodies of their victims cook and pop. Smash cut to black. That's where we'll take our break. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that kid is the world's biggest problem right now. <laughs> yep. Not just us, not just our next characters. That child yep. is Here's Damien the... from The Omen right now. <laughs> Here's the thing, right? That child did nothing to us. I inadvertently coked that child's family. I have just a tinge of guilt. Not a lot of guilt. <laughs> but like a tinge of guilt. I would like to remind you all that Tobias did survive. Tobias indeed did survive. <laughs> That's, I feel so bad for him. <laughs> <laughs> that is most unfortunate. Uh, we, we will be back. Uh, if you're watching at home, just blink and we'll be right back. Uh, let's take our five.
We have returned. When we, last we left, we went to a smash cut to a title card, a blank, a black screen. As the title comes up on the screen, Family Matters. Oh. In a <laughs> bloody, distressed font. I almost killed Gilbert. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my bad. I should know not to eat. <laughs> I should know not to eat Captain Crunch while we're doing this. Yeah, I was I was gonna say all in the family, but it's not that kind of movie. Right. So like, Another title come, card comes up two years later. Alex, who are you playing? Um, I I will I will stick to my guns and I'm gonna play um Colin Culpepper Jr., the metallurgist. And what does Colin Culpepper Jr. do for What's his average day look like? Well, when he's not, um, you know, trying to find new and interesting ways to categorize metals and rocks, um, he is trying to find ways to decompress from having to find new and interesting ways to um, categorize rocks and metals. And how old is this fella? Uh, he's probably 30. Excellent. And how long has he lived in uh, in Springwood, Illinois? Oh, probably not long. I mean, I imagine um, de depending on where it is, he probably moved there to finish his uh, finish his degree out. Yeah, the Working economy with is professor Professor Humble at the university. You know, excellent. Yeah, you've you've moved in. There's a small uh, school nearby. It's about a twenty minute drive. You found a nice, affordable uh, house that was for rent. Um, because the family uh, moved away about two years ago after they experienced a tragedy, a tragic that's loss a, of their child. That's a damn shame. Uh, the home is now managed by a property management company. Um, who are you playing now, Allie? I'm Brad. I am a quarterback on the football team. And I started playing sports because at home, I just didn't want to be at home because it was just always a mess. and troubled so i got really good at it and i got a scholarship and so now i'm trying to keep that and all about the game all right so you also attend the u of i uh in springwood um gilbert who are you playing i am playing matthew thrash alvarez um I'm a delinquent, <laughs> or so they tell me. Are you a juvenile delinquent, or are you a freshly adult delinquent? Uh, I would say probably have a, have crested into adult, freshly adult delinquent. Um, you know, I've gotten all the talks from all the, the authority you, figures you, in my life. Are you in the fun cusp where you're like 20, but still under state ward? Yeah, I'm, I'm right. right about there. And so you're almost out of the system. Yeah. Uh, you've been moved to a new home in Springwood just recently. Yep. Won't be here long. And Gilbert, who are you playing now? Or not Gilbert, I'm sorry. Right. Um, I am playing Nano. <laughs> <laughs> Chaz, who are you playing now? Uh, Nano, a new yeah. transfer student to U of I. Excellent. And uh, transferring from where? Uh, she hasn't said. Oh, okay. Beautiful. So we pick up with uh, Thrash. Pulling up to this house. At the edge of Springwood. You only have six months left till you're no longer a ward of the state. All you have to do is get through this last six months with no trouble. You'll have a fresh start, clean slate. 
your last placement, uh, you had to be removed. Why? Uh, ties into the, uh, I don't believe I'm going to get a fresh start because it ties into, uh, uh, I've been, I've been accused of, of stealing cars. Multiple cars have gone missing. Uh, and I haven't fucking done it. Um, but you know, they, the police seem to think that I'm running some sort of chop shop. Uh, and, uh, my, my last home didn't care for that too much. Didn't, uh, didn't believe me when I said it wasn't me. Uh, yeah. So that's going to hang over my head for forever. It feels like I'm getting pretty irritated with it. The caseworker, uh, pulls into this driveway, uh, looks almost like kind of a slightly too perfect, uh, suburban home. It's two stories tall, uh, white building with a blue door. Um, blue wooden door. There's a, a square window in that door. It's probably about six inches uh, high, about three, four inches wide. Um, there's lattice work going up the sides of the porch that have uh, rose bushes growing along it. The only thing that strikes you as a bit odd as you as you pull up to this house is the iron bars on the windows. Aw, you found me a pretty little prison. Am I going to be forced to do family dinners here? That's what a serious fuck looks like. The caseworker says, um, the uh, Robinson family had um, a previous child who had a, a bit of a tendency to want to escape. Mm. Um, so they had to put the, those bars in for security. It's oh, good. Yeah. They're, they're a good family. I think you'll uh, enjoy them. Oh, yeah, judging by the rose bushes, I can't imagine why you would want to escape. You know, if you just gave it a try, you might uh, you might like it here. You might even thrive. I uh, understand Mr. Robinson took the um, uh, initiative of setting you up for a couple of classes at the university, in fact. Ah, that's right. Got to gotta hit those books better myself. And I promise I am going to try. I'm going to I'm going to I'm really going to hit those books. I think you know what? By golly, I think you're right. I think that uh, this might just be the fit for me, Chief. You know, that's, that's the spirit. Um, yeah. As you're parking, the door opens and you see uh, a guy looks like he's probably late 40s, early 50s, relatively fit, short salt and pepper hair. Uh, he's wearing a sweater, like a gray sweater. Uh, with, you know, a collar shirt underneath it and uh, brown khakis. Uh, and a girl. Looks like she's probably seven. Um, blonde pigtails. Uh, wearing a pretty baby doll dress and carrying a Barbie. Sort of limply in her hand as she comes running out onto the uh, front lawn. I'm having a fucking heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> he, he waves and smiles. You didn't say anything about a little sister. Uh, yes, you're the second placement in the home. God fucking damn it. All right. Well, yeah, no, that makes sense. Have me as a role model. Hi. She runs <laughs> over. Are you my new big brother? Oh, you bet your, your, bet your, uh, your Barbie sport. My name's not sport. My name is Daisy. Oh, that's the sweetest name. Hi, Daisy. How old are you? I'm seven. That's great, Daisy. Hi, you must be Mr. Robinson. I like this one, Mr. Robinson. That's good, Daisy. Why don't you go on in the house uh, or, or go around back to the to the uh, swing set? I'll be back there in a moment. He extends a hand. I'll nice. shake it real firmly. Nice to meet you. Uh, what thrash. would you prefer I call it? You prefer I call you Thrash? Yeah, it's the it's the brand. <laughs> right on, Thrash. Um, go ahead and uh, take your bags inside. Uh, my wife will show you where your room is. Um, I hope uh, you don't mind. I took the liberty. Uh, your caseworker mentioned that you had some interest in, in uh, automotive uh, work. 
So I took the liberty of signing you up for some auto shop classes at the, at the college. That's, I'm going to look at my caseworker. Just she nods. Thanks. I really appreciate that. Hey, no problem. Uh, Listen, when I was young, I, I'm sure you hear this a lot. When I was young, I had some hard times too. And, uh, I just want to do my best to make this as comfortable and nice of a place for you. Hopefully it can feel like home until you're uh, on your own. Yeah. When, just out of curiosity, when my caseworker, big smile over my caseworker, just said that I had an interest in automotives, uh, how'd that conversation go? I just asked if there was anything I should set up for you to, uh, you know, fill your time with. Um, I know a couple people, you know, I'm uh, pretty active in the PTA. I know a couple people that own businesses around town. So I was looking into things like maybe a job or whatnot, but uh, she said that you had a great passion and uh, quite a bit of experience with auto with automobiles. Hmm. Well, she does take detailed notes, I suppose. I'm going to make my way in. Uh, much appreciated. Great to meet you. Uh, I'll see you real soon. Drive safe. She waves goodbye and uh, Mr. Robinson goes around the back uh, of the house. Right on. I will uh, immediately begin to assess, uh, you know, the look at the house and whatnot. Um, it's a really nice place. It's clean. Uh, were, there, were there any cars on the street, along the street, uh, parked on the street no, side? No, uh, everybody in this neighborhood has a, um, has a driveway and, and a couple car garage. I am going to have to park my one stolen car, the one I did steal, <laughs> around the block then. Yeah, as you're looking around, you see it's a nice place. Uh, there's several pictures up. It looks, by the looks of it, they've been fostering for some time. Um, you see probably eight or nine different kids in pictures. Got a whole factory here. You see, you even see uh, one of the pictures on the mantle is like a Christmas, and it looks like some of the older kids have returned. Mm. Daisy's gone. His wife hasn't found me yet. Uh, yeah, his wife is uh, standing up at the top of the stairs, and she kind of leans in and says, how do you like the place? You have a lovely home. Um, you have a lovely home. Thrash, was it, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, Come on in. Sure thing. I'll pick up my bags and make my way inside. That's your room right there is Daisy's room. And uh, down at the end of the hall is uh, is mine and uh, Mr. Robinson's room. Um, go ahead and give me a empathy um, and whatever mental attribute you'd like to rely on roll as you look into Daisy's room. Right on. Um, I have no empathy. Uh, <laughs> just, just on intellect. Uh, that is, oh, that's a 10, actually. I saw the zero and panicked. At first blush, it looks like kind of what you'd expect a young girl's room to look like. There's um, lots of stuffed animals, uh, a fair bit of, you know, uh, pink in the furniture, things along those lines. You see a lot of crayon drawings and a couple of them catch your eye. Uh, you have been in the system and around enough disturbed children in your in your life to recognize some of the set. Like there's some stuff going on in, in her art that doesn't sit quite right with you. Lots of fire, lots of uh, what looks like cookout scenes. Daisy seems like a little artist. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she, uh, in fact, uh, she's going to be trying out for the Art Academy uh, in the fall. Right on. She's submitting any of those? Oh, those are just your sketches, you know. Hmm. You don't find the uh, flames a little bit concerning? Uh, the counselor said that it's to be expected. Um, she lost her uh, birth family in a fire. Ah, oh, oh, that's awful. Yeah, uh, we, we don't talk about it a whole lot. 
you know, if she brings it up, we we don't hide from it, but uh, we try not to bring it up to her. No, I get it. I'll, I'll be sure to uh, avoid that subject. Sure. Uh, this is my room, you said? Yep. Right on. I really appreciate it. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to take some time to unpack and, you know, um, settle in. Uh, sure. You know how it is. Big, big move. I do. Um, don't blare your music after 10. Will do. Absolutely. Uh, fridge is open. The kitchen is self-serve and uh, dinner's at six. She walks away and you start looking around in your new empty space. We'll come back to you. Right on. Um, Chaz, what would you be doing on, say, a Friday night? Well, I'm a new transfer, so I guess I am looking for friends and finding out what people do here because there was no research done. I just kind of showed up one day. Sure. Um, there's a football game tonight. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll go there. Right. Um, you head down and uh, as you're getting there, you notice um, there's a couple of people standing outside of the of the school um, like stadium like handing out flyers mm -hmm. and they're like, we need to everyone to come to the city council meeting on the, on the 25th. Um, we demand transparency in the investigation of uh, what happened at the, at the Barber estate. I want Please to take like, this flyer. Please take this flyer. And like, people are just like walking by, like, I want to listen with like an intensity that they haven't seen in a decade. All right. Um, as uh, you're walking into the football game as well, um, Allie, what are you going to do when you see these people handing out these flyers? Um, I feel like I'm probably used to them, so I'm I'm not going to really pay the attention to them. But uh, Nano, can you describe yourself to me again? Uh, so I'm about five foot two. Um, like just has like a white shirt on, uh, like a knee length skirt. Just I assume very traditional, um, but like intense focus on what they're talking about. But not intense on like any specific aspect. It's not like I care about the barber state or I even know what. I'm just like, holy crap! I need to listen to what they're saying. Okay, so. <laughs> So you're really intensely staring at these people. And I feel like if I uh, hadn't really seen her before, I might be like, hey, did you come to watch the game that intently too? Because huh? I'm going huh? to be playing. Oh, you're going to play? That's so great. H Hi, I'm Nano. I'm Brad. I'm Brad. I go for a high five. H Hi. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I came to watch the I'm sorry, but like this... They were just speak with such passion. I just got like drawn in. No, um, you don't need to worry about that. They just they think of conspiracies and stuff like that. I'll get you some really good seats though if you want to watch me play. Oh, will you? And immediately, like whatever tension was over there, it's just gone. They get <laughs> I'm all focused on Brad now. <laughs> but I would love seats. I'm gonna pull strings because I know the football coach. <laughs> you could do that. For oh, that's so cool. Have you been here a long time? Are you like? The, the roots of the, the football team? Yes. Oh, I am I, the football team. I like I didn't even know I was gonna be to meet anyone here. And I met like the football team. This was a lot. See, this is why you just have to like take chances. Yeah, I'll, there's a lot of chances we could take in life. Absolutely. Yeah, like I, I love to take chances. Whatever chances you want, like sign me up. Well, there's a party after the game too. We could go to that together too. All right. Are you sure you want me to come with you? Do you not like parties? I, I, I love parties, but I don't I don't know anyone. I don't know if I'm cool enough for parties. Where's like a like the football party? No, you'll know lots of people by the end of it. 
you're, you know what? You're right. Like I gotta, once again, like you said, take the chances. I would love to come. Thank you, Brad. You're so nice. <laughs> I'll find you after the game. You gotta watch me play though. All right, yeah, I'll be, I'll be in the seats that you uh, set up. Excellent. We, uh, you go in and you uh, play a glorious and victorious football game. There's a, a bit of a montage of uh, you kind of being a badass and maybe <laughs> some eye contact between uh, you know, uh, you and Nano, uh, as Nano sort of shyly cheers a little bit, you know, as she notices you looking at her. Um, and uh, we fade away from this montage of the victorious football game to our doctor friend, our metallurgist. Um, well, in my daytime hours, we're in the off hours now. It's a Friday night, right? It is a Friday night, yeah. What now I get to dabble in my real interest, the stuff that doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> Um, I am probably printing more flyers for Chelsea and Jan to hand out because they took the ones for the game as I, I am, I happen to be a truth seeker in a group of conspiracy theorists. <laughs> um, so I am probably, you know, printing them more flyers and I'm probably going through the, the rest of the, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going through the catalog of, of tips and info and methodically tagging them as like crackpot, rating them on like on a scale of one to 175 based on like some specific criteria. And, um, you know, I've probably got like some EDM playing in the background and I'm wishing I had a joint and where I don't know where to get drugs. And where are you doing this work at? I'm probably at home. Um, I'm probably at home unless I have a reason to, I mean, until I, I need to, I, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about getting drugs. <laughs> oh, I could do that. Yeah. At the university lab. Boom. All right. Um, yeah. So about halfway through the football game, you hear um, the clip clap of angry heels walking down the hallway toward you. Whose heels are those? What was uh, the sister's name? Nurse what? Becky. The last name unknown because Tobias never said his last <laughs> name. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is Becky Thompson. She comes storming into the room you're in. Okay. I will uh, continue to look busy. And slams a flyer down in front of you. Goodness me. My family has been through enough. Tobias is just starting to make progress at the hospital. Look, people just have questions, and it's not like they're going to your house or anything or seeking you out personally. We keep your names away from the whole thing. Well, they, I don't really do any investigating myself. So I, can't I got a say phone me. call last week from investigation discovery. I don't really control them. It's not like I'm in charge of, I mean, would, would you rather this stuff end up, you know, kind of chaotically springing out into the woodwork or being handled, you know, locally. I would rather everyone just leave me and my family alone. We've suffered a tragedy. My brother is in recovery. I, the doctors are hopeful that one day he will be vo verbal again. And I don't want anything to jeopardize that. Well, I mean, there's not really like a, well, what do you, look, I don't know what happened out there specifically. Nobody does and everybody wants to. And it's not like, it's not like they want to hurt you. They want to figure out what happened. And it's not like, you know, he's able to tell us. People died. It was a tragedy. Everyone responsible is gone. But are they though? Because if you, if you look at, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to pull the binder out. <laughs> Because based on this account here, this account here, and this forensic evidence, and these accounts from these people, and the condition that people were in when they were, not everybody was necessarily harmed personally, some were only damaged by the fire, someone was found with a gunshot wound after that it happened at a different scene at a different time. Like, there are questions that need answers, and no one else is talking. Wouldn't you rather this never happen again? I would rather have my brother back. I understand. Good. She turns and walks out. I resume printing. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Uh, 
we cut across um, town. Oh, oh, go ahead. Do you have something else you want to do? Well, yeah, because I mean, once I'm only going to be working on this for a little longer, and um, I did just finish up a major final, so um, I will also kind of troll the university intranet and look for uh, things to be a buzz about, specifically things I can catch a buzz at. You definitely uh, see about the the after party that's happening. Okay, because I'm not a teacher. I'm a student still, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, it doesn't count. You arrive at the party. Um, this party is going on. Uh, it's Friday night. It's probably about 1030 at night. Uh, one of the uh, local kids, a uh, guy by the name of, uh, we'll call him Mark Whitaker. Guy by the name of Mark Whitaker is uh, throwing the party. His parents are out of town. Um, he has the house to himself. He's a local uh, who rides the bench on the football team, but he has parents to travel a lot, so that has gotten him a lot of social clout. So we have kind of a, a montage of, of party scenes. Uh, you see uh, lots of people, red cups on the lawn. You see uh, someone using a a uh, Culligan water bottle that's been cut in half is a gravity bong in the swimming pool. Um, <laughs> you see uh, people playing chicken. Um, as uh, you step into the party, Alex, what uh, what are you what are you taking in? Uh, what, what do you see when you first step in? Um, I would probably. Um, I've gone to great pains to make sure that I. I have a clear understanding of everyone and, and every, you know, area I step into, I don't go into these situations, um, cold. So if I see anybody new, I will probably zero in on them and attempt to derive and, and attempt to discern their story. Where are Brad and, uh, uh, forgive, uh Nano. Yeah, where, where are Brad and Nano? Real cool. Out of the pool. Yeah. I don't know if Nano drinks, but Brad definitely has a drink. As you're walking through, as you're walking through, you grab a cup and make your way out to the back, and you see a new new girl by the pool talking to uh, Brad from the football team. Of course. Okay. Mm. I will. I will clock that and then go fetch myself a drink. Um, football player bringing girl to a party. She might be either a pro or a groupie. So. I'm going to attempt to ascertain what I can about them from a distance because I'm a creeper like that. <laughs> as you're as you're pumping the keg, uh, a couple guys are standing next to it. Yeah, man, I heard that guy that moved in next door. He like stole 15 cars or some shit. And uh, you know, I think maybe we should talk to him about you know fucking like being our wheel, man. Right? Like we need to we need to open up this operation. Man, how come you have never have anything to say about my ideas? His buddy's just standing there with his hands in his pocket, looks up at you and like nods. I'm, I'll nod back. <laughs> <Just finish. laughs> he looks over. What, man? What? You want something? You want bag? Like weed? Yeah, like weed. He opens up his coat and he's got like 20 dime bags taped to the inside of his coat. <laughs> that one. That one, that one, and that one. <laughs> Lovely choices, sir. Enjoy <laughs> responsibly. That'll be $45. I will uh, set my beard. I'll say, I will turn to his friend and say, hold my beard. <laughs> <laughs> he sh shrugs and does. <laughs> and I'm going to get, I'll get, I'll get out some money and I will, uh, I will count it out, uh, you know, and hand him, I'll hand him an amount of bills that leaves me with an equal ratio in my pocket so that I don't feel off balance. Excellent. You have procured some marijuana and make your way back out to the to the backyard as these two are talking. What are you two talking about um, at the pool? I'm asking Nana what she likes and what she thought of my my game. Uh, I mean, I like lots of things. It's hard to chill down, but I did like that last throw you did, even though you were already up like 17 points. Um, to really like you like really like stuck it to them you know like that's I think that shows real sportsmanship to like go hard even at the end when you're winning I appreciated that 
That's what I'm saying. Nobody likes it when I do that, but that's exactly what I'm saying. Do you want to see something cool? Of course. Hold my beer. Uh, Okay. (laughs) It's one of my quips. Um, (laughs) I'm planning on tackling one of my guys into the pool to impress her. Excellent. You jump over and just take him down straight into the pool. He has no idea what's coming. You know, phone out in his hand. The fo- his iPhone is in the pool. Uh, it is. Uh, there are like five different angles that show up immediately on TikTok of this. Um, and tell me, um, how does Thrash react to the sound of the splashing water, along with the party music outside of his bedroom window? Oh, I got to get in on that. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming my my room has has bars on it. Your room does have bars on it. <laughs> I hate asking this. What about daisies? Are uh, you going to go over and, and peek in, or are you trying to remember from earlier? Yeah, peek in. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to, fuck. Uh, I'm going to check to see if Daisy's room has bars on it. Uh, you look in and you see two things. One, Daisy's room does have bars on it. Two, Daisy's not in her bed. Don't you go walk around that house? <laughs> well, nobody raised me, so you know, nobody can. Nobody raised a snitch, so I ain't not, not my fucking business. Um, <laughs> weird ass kid. Um, what, what's the time right about now? It's about ten thirty at night. That kid should be in bed. Well, the Robinsons are bad parents. Uh, I'm gonna. Do they? Not, they said not to blare blare music after 10. So I'm assuming they're probably in bed. Yes. Maybe not fully asleep. Okay, well, we're going to try to just go out. Go out downstairs and pop out a window. Going out the front door doesn't seem, doesn't seem wise. So we're just going to go ahead and pop go out a living room window or kitchen window or something. Go ahead and give me a larceny and uh, dexterity check if you don't mind. I am. Infinitely better at larceny with this dude. <laughs> it wouldn't show. Uh, that is one success. Nice. Uh, so you're creeping down the stairs. You're not making any noise or anything like that. You immediately clock that all the first floor windows also have bars on them. Uh, you also can see as you sort of round the stairs uh, down uh, from the stairway to the bottom floor, uh, you get a straight shot right into the kitchen. And you can see that the island in the middle of the kitchen, uh, there's a drawer uh, sitting open. Now, fuck this. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So what I'm going to, I'm going to, It's only next door. I don't need this. All right, cool. I'm going to, I'm leaving out the front door. Uh, whatever's going on in this kitchen. Uh, this is a weird fucking kid. I don't. Right. You Fuck these people. You, you uh, dip out the front door. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make my way to the party, but on my way, I'm going to have, I'm going to text, uh, text my boys, help them bring my car around. Okay. I have a connection through my origin path, the gang. Um, bring me my Pontiac. Um, yeah, and I'm going to go see what this, this party's all about. You over, it's hopping at this point. You see, like, the, the school mascot um, has on, like, his hat, his head, and his shirt, but, like, no pants, uh, and is, like, two-fisting gallons of milk. Um, you see that there's a beer pong set up in the living room that appears to be taking up like half of the living room floor. Um, just people dancing, sweaty, naked. You see somebody like, like you walk in and somebody like falls down the stairs and throws up and then passes out like at your feet. I step right over him, uh, stab a hole in the dude's milk jug uh, if I can. And, and just pull out a pen. <laughs> yep. And uh, first things first, I need alcohol. And you go back to the keg. <clears throat> hey, you're that new guy that just moved in next door, right? 
Yeah. My name is Robert. This is my friend, Jason. Give me one good reason to care. That's a quip. <laughs> <laughs> you plus one your next one? Uh, he says, how about I give you 27? He opens up his coat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robert, what do you got here? Lots of weed, man. No, 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 no. <laughs> Buddy, I'm not, I'm not you know, 27. You said, all right. You got, I'm assuming, you know, being a class act as yourself, you have 27 different brands, right? Different, different strains. We're not talking all Christmas tree kush, all just skunk, all nonsense, right? You, you have variety here, right? No. Yeah. Like, listen, this is Bahama Mama. This is Pineapple Express. Uh, this right here is, is uh, uh, it's called Jimi Hendrix because uh, you're going to die if you smoke it. Um, <laughs> say this, say less, Rob. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll take some Jimi Hendrix and uh, you got any White Widow? Uh, he looks over at uh, Jason. Jason holds a finger up and pulls out a bag from under his coat. How much? He looks over at Robert. Robert says, you know what? For you, it's a housewarming present, man. We heard about your arrival in town. And uh, I just wanted to say, like, I respect your work. And uh, we could really use somebody to, to kind of work as like a wheel man to get us around a little bit. Because, like, you know, we have a pretty good business, you know, just well, hanging out down in front of the fast stop. But, like, we'd like to that? be able to get what work is what? You respect my work. What work is that? Oh man, you're the, you're the new guy, right? Like the you're the uh, the juvie case that's living next door. Yeah, so then I do a lot of work. What work is that? Driving, man. Like you stole like 110 cars. You got to be a good driver. Stole 110, huh? The number's up since the last time I heard it. Huh? Yeah, 110. Oh, do you uh, not know gonna, how to drive, man? That's bomb. I'm gonna cold clock this dude. All right. Uh, you hit him. He just goes, Mommy, and passes the fuck out. Like, you know, he roll. Like, he just I'm going to look at his, his friend. And just, his, his friend just holds hold his hands up and steps back. <laughs> it wasn't fucking me. He nods. I'm going to fill my, my solo cup full of beer out of the keg and then make my way out to the, the pool area. All right. You step out back to the pool. Um, all of you who are back by the pool, uh, have you partaken yet, uh, Alex? Well, so what I was going to do was after Brad uh, jumps into the pool, I was going to seize my opportunity to go over to the empty seat where Brad was sitting, <laughs> sit down and say, what a moron, and then <laughs> begin rolling at, this, at the seat that Brad was sitting in while Brad tussles with Brad's friend in the pool. Um, and then I was going to... Uh, offer it well, I was going to light it and offer it to our new friend here and introduce myself sure hi Colin you new here uh, yeah I just moved in uh this week <laughs> Nano nice to meet you Nano? I would like at that moment I would like all of you to roll uh integrity cunning um and I will give a complication of four to Brad <laughs> because uh Brad is currently wrestling the majority, the lion's share of the football team has now made their way uh, into the pool, uh, girlfriends and boyfriends included. Um, so I it's, don't even have enough dice to overcome this. <laughs> <laughs> you might roll some tens. You never know. Okay. A shot. Uh, that, uh, God bless the, the quip enhancement. Oh, I do have a quip enhancement, but I didn't get any success. <laughs> Right, so uh, it does not apply. My what a moron was equipped as well. Uh, that's with equip it's six. Okay, two, excellent. excellent. Four, excellent. So with two successes, oh, and you didn't get any, right? So you're just wrestling in the pool with your buddies. <laughs> it's a good time. Um, uh, with two successes, Nano, you see some sort of flashing or flickering light coming through the fence next door. Huh, that's weird. Um, the two of you that got four or more successes can see that something is like flashing, like someone's striking a match at about waist height on the other side of the, the fence. It's coming from my, my house, isn't it? It is. Um, did Nano take the joint? 
Yeah, she took it. She's like okay. looking at it like, should I should I smoke this? Either smoke it or give it back. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. And she's gonna give it a shot to try to be rebellious. Excellent. Uh, roll stamina and uh, integrity, please. I don't think Addo has a lot of stamina. I will uh, just take this opportunity to go ahead and reference uh, the They Came From Beneath the Sea jumpstart uh, called Party Beach Creature Feature, hey. uh, which uh, was may have been written by Travis Legg and may include <laughs> rules in it for complications when you're stoned. That's, awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. I was just I was just talking about that jump start. The other um, day. I'm, I'm like, so my hand is kind of out, right? But I'm looking at where the match is. Like I'm 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 yeah. kind of gazing intently, but I'm yeah. You know. it, it, it's almost like when you first lit the joint, like you're, you know, as you passed it through, like the cherry, like it, it met with the fire. Sure. <laughs> um, and you can you got six successes. Yeah, you can see like a small silhouette by the fire um with two successes you take a hit off the joint and you cough your lungs out and you have a uh you have a, co- a condition uh high as fuck uh and that's a you have a level one complication to all your dice rolls until you resolve being high as fuck uh i'm gonna stand up and go hey hey you there hey what are you doing you just see more flickering uh you see you can clearly see this dude standing up and like shouting at your yard thrash Mind Badger. your own fucking business, and I'm gonna start walking over to, to my yard. All right, there, there's a wooden fence between you, so you're gonna jump the fence or go around. I'm gonna, ha- I'm gonna jump the fence. All right, give me uh, athletics and uh, whatever physical attribute you'd like to rely on. I think Dex makes sense. My might is higher, but I think Dex makes sense. That is three successes. All right, you uh, clear the fence, no problem. Like, run up and just, like, vault over it more than jump over it. Are you doing anything when you see this? Me? No, you're still not seeing it, Brad, because you're still wrestling with the... Like, <laughs> one, of, one of the other people, like, might point it out, like, as his feet are going over the fence the other way, but you don't really notice what's going on. I turn back to Nano. I say, did you see that? <laughs> and I take, huh? I take I take the joint back. Did you see that? Did I? Yeah, I I, I saw it. I ooh, that was the. Uh, I've never seen one that big up close before. Uh, <laughs> quit, by the way, <laughs> that I would is... kill for weed that kicks in this quick. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I kind of shrug and decompress, and I say, I guess I'm minding my fucking business, and I sit back down. <laughs> Excellent. You land on the other side of the fence and you see uh, Daisy is on her knees uh, in like her nightgown in front of the um, like the gas Coleman grill. And you can see like the the kerosene is on and she's like striking matches and just kind of like got a vacant look in her eye. Hey, oh, oh, she like looks up at you and like audibly wets herself. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. She throws the matches down and starts turn, backing turn, up. No, stop. Look, listen. Hey, hey. I'm your new brother. I'm not a fucking narc. There, there was a the party. Kerosene. I thought people wanted to cook me yeah, no, barbecue. Turn, I understand that. Turn the kerosene off. She looks over and shuts the... Pulls, right it on. As, pulls it as tight shut as, as a child can. Yeah, listen. All right. I know I just got here. Um, I don't know what your deal is. This will stay between us, all right? If you can keep quiet about me being over here, we'll keep everything that happens just to ourselves, all right? Sound good? You promise you can keep secrets? Yeah, man, I can keep secrets. She smiles. That's really Ugh. good. Jesus fucking. <laughs> <laughs> the light turns on in the kitchen. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Mrs. Robinson flings the door open. Fucking ducking down. I'm going to keep my ear open, though. Um, what are you doing about uh, Daisy? 
And she's in plain view. Just leave her there? Fucking narc. Shit, am I? So, okay, let me make sure I've got this, this setting right. I'm outside, right? Mm-hmm. You're, like, like, standing, like, if you imagine there's, like, a back patio kind of thing. Yeah, have yeah. The, gotcha. Yeah, okay, too easy. That. I'm not going to duck behind. I'm just going to... I'm going to lie my way fucking out of this. <laughs> Falling back on all the shitty things I used to do as a kid. Um, I'm just going <laughs> to knock and just put my hands up like I'm expecting to be shot. She flips the, flings the door open. What's going on back here? Sorry. Um, there was noises outside. There seems to be a party going on next door. Daisy runs over and just bawling, puts her arms around Mrs. Robinson's leg and says, I got woke up by the party and I got scared and I had another flashback and, and, and Thrasher was so good. He came out here and he talked me down and helped me. He, He's such a good big brother. Thank you for getting him for me. And she starts I just, patting yeah, I her just, head and picking her up and like holding her close. And she's like, oh, you had an accident. I'm so sorry. Let's get you cleaned up. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause any fear or anything like that. I just, I heard her downstairs. I heard, I thought somebody else from the party tried to come in and. Mrs. Robinson reaches out and like grabs your wrist very gently and just looks in the eyes and says, thank you so much. And yeah, no turns problem. around and, and starts walking inside and. She like stops and kind of looks over the fence and looks at you and says, just be back by midnight, okay? Sure thing. Uh, I'll clean this up. I just, uh, yeah. What the fuck is this house doing? <laughs> <laughs> she goes inside, the light goes off. Uh, I'll throw some paper towels down over it. <laughs> I uh I'm going to uh kind of like nudge Nano and aim my head in that direction. I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna start walking toward the fence. Okay. Where I saw that angry dude go. And you you could probably like you couldn't make out what was being said over the party, but you could tell that people were talking back there and you saw the lights come on and off. Yeah, and I heard a, I definitely heard a door shut if I was listening before yeah. it. All right. Yeah, I want. I'm a wander over with my with the second half of my uh, do delicious. Excellent. About this time, uh, the football team has finally emerged from the pool, and you see that there's a couple people that are kind of paying attention to what's going on by the uh, fence. Hey, uh, didn't you forget something? The fuck you doing over my fence? What, what was that, Brad? I'm on. I'm on this side of the fence, asshole. If people I, are going over that way, especially if. Nano went that way. I'm going that way, but I definitely took my shirt off. Um, and if I call him an asshole, I'm going to slap him in the face. Me? No, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I slap this man in the face through Open the palm through the fence or what? Oh, like, I'm guessing. I was assuming like over the fence. I didn't know how tall is the fence. <laughs> it's like a private. I mean, it's like they have a pool, so it's like a. Oh, well, I can't facility. slap him in the face. I'm on this side of the fence, yeah. so I'm, I wouldn't be on this side of the fence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I say. I say. Didn't you forget something? Forget what? To introduce yourself, I hold out the doobie. Yeah. Oh, good. Rude Hop ass. Over the fence. <laughs> Offer him a light. Now I slap him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then I give him the doobie. Name's Colin. Uh, Don't be a dick. You're making a scene here. Did you hey, check yeah. out the matches? Is that how you're lighting the doobie? Sm yeah, uh, I'll just. You woke up my little sister. Yeah, it's not my party, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> did you buy this off the dude with the coat? Oh yeah, did you meet him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I met him. Uh, you hear who knocked out the fucking dealer? Shut <laughs> up. <There's like laughs> three of your friends come walking in carrying uh, cases of Coors Light. Those are my boys. Where's my shit at? Where's my car? It's uh, out front, man. Right on. <laughs> uh, gentlemen, they look this is... Uh, Nano. I didn't catch your name. They're looking at Nano. Who is this? Hi, I'm Nano. I bet you are. Uh, I, I am. Well, you're definitely going to have everybody's attention. You brought a freaking gang to the party. Here, have a beer. <laughs> uh, thanks. I'll take the beer. 
and have my other beer and Brad's beer. You all start enjoying yourselves, having a good time, drinking, getting to know one another. I'd like each of you to give me a final um, integrity cunning role for the night. Don't forget that you have a complication from being stoned. How many? How many is it? Is it just one? Just one. Yeah. If you're smoking weed, it's just well. Uh, right on. Yeah. If you're smoking weed, it's just one. Mm-hmm. With the oh, that and then that um that didn't you didn't you, did you didn't you forget something was equipped too? I have to I keep forgetting yeah. this. <laughs> oh crap, not equipped. Yeah, back to yeah, four. So all right, excellent. I keep forgetting. Because you get more if you can if you can fit in more of them, right? If you can like, get you can, the same, the same one over and over yeah. again. Yes, yeah, so you yeah. get up to plus. If five. you want if you want more than one, you gotta do it at least once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I got f- I got four. Excellent. And how many did you get uh thrash? One. All right, uh, you notice, Thrash, like the silhouette of Daisy kind of like looking down over the party, backlit. From what you're assuming is your room. Um, The rest of you, uh, the two of you that got the higher amount of successes, uh, you definitely see the silhouette of this girl um standing there you can make out the the sort of loosely hanging barbie doll in her hand and that her head is kind of tilted to the side a little bit i hate it i hate it so much and she just stares down at you and that's where we'll wrap things up for this week (laughs) 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 any questions comments complaints or concerns about the first uh episode of Family Matters. Tobias was rendered (laughs) nonverbal. Just want to point out, uh, Travis, you're as sadistic, if not more than Chaz. I said during (laughs) character creation, the children scare in horror movies scare the fucking shit out of me, and you made me live with it. (laughs) That thing's my sister? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Why? It's your sister that looked out for you because she didn't arc on you either, and she could have, which means yeah. you have which a duty. Which means she's diabolical. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I definitely, definitely have to have to balance between my own like, huh, and then Thrash being like, oh no, it's just a weird fucking kid. And he, de- <laughs> he, he definitely clocked that she lied like a fucking pro. And she was just, he was just on it. Just you got to cultivate dude. that. Like, yeah, that is that. some. That it's like the like, sequel. It's like the sequel to The Good Son, like the the, the, <laughs> the crazy little sister. <laughs> God, crazy little sister. <laughs> that kid's gonna kill me in my fucking sleep. <laughs> no, she has use for go- you. You're gonna I'm have to sure watch. She'll try. <laughs> you're there to bear witness and lie. Congratulations. I'm just be half asleep. She's gonna feel this tiny little hand on my shoulder. I'm like, oh, I was like, the house is burning. <laughs> oh find, fuck, Jesus! They're gonna, they're gonna find you running around the house in a gimp suit, screaming, "Burn!" In the house! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kill. <sighs> oh, on that bright, shiny note, oh, um, dude, burn in hell. <laughs> See this little blonde seven year old, Travis. <laughs> uh, yeah, no lie, her name should have been Karen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I borrowed the child. names and the characterizations of uh, many of the cannibal family from a short film I did a few years ago. Oh, that's God. amazing. That was so good. <laughs> oh, my face hurts. That's so good. Well, we are far from done. We still have quite a bit of ground to cover. We'll have to see what sort of diabolical uh, nightmares young Daisy concocts for, uh, for the group. I'm going to get blamed for everything that fucking child does in that house. I can't <laughs> <do that. laughs> and you said you can keep a secret. So don't they're going to, and, and the cops can use your middle name when they come pick you up. Oh yeah. God. <laughs> God. Eugene. <laughs> 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 On that note, let's go ahead and do our uh, outros. Um, let's start things off with, uh, with Gilbert since Gilbert uh, is being tortured. So it was a nightmare. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, you I'm, asked. Uh, I would like to point out during session zero, you all asked me for gore. 
Yeah. Yep. Cannibal family and a creepy yeah. kid. It worked. And, 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 worked. and the profit. We got the profit. And the profit. And the profit, the profit yeah. Profit was top tier. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you notice he didn't die during that scene either. Yeah. <clears throat> He's got to be around to warn more people and then eat them. Weirdo. <laughs> God, dude. Did you get the leftovers? That's so weird. <laughs> so weird. Oh, man. My scraps. Um, <laughs> I am Gilbert Ramos. See him playing uh, Thrash or Matteo Alvarez. Uh, he, him as well. Um, uh, uh, you can find me everywhere at Ramos the Nomad. Uh, it's TikTok, Twitter, Twitch, all the things. Um, I run things on Onyx Path. I run a Scion game uh, where uh, I, I'm still reeling from this fucking kid. <laughs> um, I, if if you recall, we talked about a little bit uh, about how um, uh, Chaz ran a game uh, earlier on that last month. Uh, this about uh, the the tied in. Uh, Scion Dragon. Um, recently, this past Sunday, over on Scion Godsend, the game that I run for Onyx Path, uh, over at on on their channel at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, because I wanted to tie in our worlds and whatnot, and because I wanted to, you know, set this in the same universe and uh, and all that good stuff. The Time of Dragons has had incredible repercussions. The end of the last episode of Scion Godsend ended with a pulse being felt throughout the world, uh, and all the science heard this beautiful roar of dragons. Um, nice. It was really cool. Um, and there is a, there was a mythos sign that was kind of sinking into a blood portal and was like, it has begun. And they were like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's really fun. Um, I do that on the Onx path over on my channel, twitch.tv slash rolling nomads. I run a, I run two vampire games, uh, a Sabat Chronicle over on Fridays uh that is at 5 30 mountain standard time uh and uh like Hendry come our long running thing that started on the onyx path and transitioned over to our channel uh that is every sunday at 9 30 mountain 9 30 a.m mountain standard time uh all these things are also being uploaded to youtube youtube.com slash rolling nomads where you can kind of play catch up if uh if you don't really feel like hopping in right at the middle um i think i think that's probably the best i've ever done with with shilling myself out Congratulations. Yeah. I'm very proud of you. Right on. Uh, next up, Chaz, please uh, tell us who you are, what you do, all your pertinence, and uh, your your impressions of how, of how the evening went. Gotcha. Uh, so once again, I am Chaz, uh, he, him, a PhD student who just like looks at like video games and like stories and music, you know, all that fun, fun stuff. Um, played uh, Hawks, who died a lovely, lovely death. Um, I'm now playing Nano, the seemingly naive transfer student but it was also a student created by me. So there is some darkness in there, um, which I'm going to break out at some point. Right. I'm um, waiting for the nano like heel turn in this movie where we find yeah. out that she is the real villain of this the story. The nano art. <laughs> I'll also say like I based her off of this show that I started to watch recently, um, Girl from Nowhere. It is fucking horrifying. Um, so yeah, <laughs> like the first episode, like I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, this is not what I was expected. Either way. What's that on? Uh, Netflix. Yeah. Um, it's a Thai drama, drama, dark comedy. I, I don't know what the fuck it is, but I am enthralled. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you were like. You're gonna be I'm like, yeah, I'm making an anno. I don't know how we're gonna do this. And then the what we were able to do with like they came from. I was like, oh no, I can make this like dark as shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh good. I'm glad. I'm happy. Uh, tonight was amazing. Like I felt the horror. And my favorite favorite part is that like, you need to have, you gotta have a villain who you can love and hate. Cause if you just hate, then like, yeah, like, but if you also just love them, then you don't, but like to have the tiny little child who is like, yeah, if you got my back, I got your back. Cause there's a part of me that's like, we gotta protect her. But there's other part of me that like, she gonna fucking like put you in a drum of oil and roll you in the Pacific. And I'm not that upset with it, which is amazing. <laughs> This kid, dude, this kid's going to fucking haunt my dreams. <laughs> uh, I hope so. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> Any, anything that you wanted to promote at all, uh, <laughs> Jess? Uh, not, nothing yet. Once again, uh, I'm in that part where I have things in the works, so I will talk to you later so that next week maybe we have stuff to promote. Excellent. Love it. Um, and uh, that will bring us around to Ali. Uh, go ahead and tell us all your pertinence and any thoughts you have on the, on the evening. Hi, I'm Ali. She, her. I'm playing Brad, he, him, who he doesn't have a lot of thoughts because he doesn't know anything that happened tonight. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Ignorance is bliss for old Brad. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which I feel like is very par for the course for how I made that character. Uh, but I like Jazz. I feel for this kid. She watched her family burn. Right. And now I'm like, oh, but she's so creepy. But I feel bad for her a little bit. Fuck that kid, dude. <laughs> I, no. I would just like to point out that Victor Crowley also watched his family burn. Yep. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> like... Fair. Maybe it's because she's a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Fuck that kid. I don't give a shit. He can go straight to hell. <laughs> That's that's gonna be good. Burn in hell. <laughs> <laughs> kids, <bro. laughs> oh, but I have nothing to promote. I that is all. <laughs> uh, Alex, please give us your pertinence. Uh, hi, I'm Alex. He him playing uh, Colin Culpepper Jr. Also he him. Um, if you want my monologue, watch the beginning of this. Um, I am looking forward to being, uh, or at least witnessing plenty of slaughter and mutilation with unknown tools or weapons or farming equipment. Here's, here's the most interesting thing I found about this. And I, I kept, I did this on purpose. I kept trying to give Travis these layups, right? And he refused to take them. <laughs> and I appreciate that about you, but I know every time, every time you think about it, <laughs> think, about, <laughs> think about what could I do to him right now? It's not like permanent. It's just like <laughs> kind of juicy. And I see, I see it happening in your brain. You're like, no, you don't take the layup. We this, have, is a, this is this is a quality this is a quality thing. So I will say this to y'all as players: be brave, because Travis <laughs> is going to kill him when he fucking wants to, <laughs> and not before that. And I'm going to leave it at that. I mean, that's I probably that's probably I, fair. And and I tried to have you know we needed to dial up the the terror in the beginning and really just sort of make it visceral and gross to get that nice pre credit sequence. And now we have to dip down so that we have somewhere to go with the drama. And I want to make sure that. You know, I can't just, you know, throw all of it in the first episode. We have to have somewhere to go. You've not begun to glimpse the tip of the iceberg that is the creepiness that this child is going to, to visit on the poor town oh of Springwood. <laughs> I mean, I'm here for oh it. Oh, God. I'm here for it. There's only, I think there's only one, there's only one, there's only one opt, opt for final girl. So like somebody's going to take it at some point. <laughs> That's true. Hey, Nano, how are you kid. feeling about all the all the attention, the only girl right now? Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. If well, Nano's I, the only girl, we are fucked. It's the most accurate representation of like a a freshman college party. Like, who's that? <laughs> no girl here. Right. Yes. And I, I would also like to personally, can I? Can I, I, I want to personally applaud Allie for managing to cram, like so much bro into like 35 seconds it was like it was this perfectly molded like piece of silly putty it was and, like, very well done i want to and like ass, and like ed hardy like it was just <laughs> there was yeah there was a lot of there was a lot oh, of bro. it was, it was <laughs> have, have, have i have you, a lot of experience firsthand okay. oh, God, <laughs> <laughs> so, that's yeah. fair oh um Priceless. and uh did anyone uh, achieve any of their aspirations Actually, I, I did. did. I did. I got a high five. I got two of them. Uh, I, does it count if it was an aspiration for my dead? Nerd? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, if everyone got a short term aspiration, that's uh, two XP for everybody. Right on. I received Yay. praise from from a cool kid uh, before I died oh, for yeah. my shitty joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> oh, did we get it for the other characters too. Well, yeah. I mean, so like, if if an aspiration was achieved. You get your XP. If two aspirations were achieved, you get your XP. Beyond that, I'm not giving out more than that. So I got I got a short on Tobias, mm. which is capture a tragedy on film, for sure. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That, that footage I, is out there. Yeah. Well, Same. so oh I was going to ask that he also get his long as a film director. 
Oh no, it hasn't been like released to the public. That okay. that that has been so like, it's just so it's just out there, there. There are some spaces where it might have been re-uploaded. There's uh-huh, probably a few, there's probably a dark website that's got the full unedited version of it. Uh-huh. Um, but for the most part, it shows up in like you know true crime dramas and or true crime yes. podcasts and like YouTube shows about like creepy deaths that happen. Mm. So we got that one. Top ten scariest got... real world killing. <laughs> mm. And I got decompressed from studies with drugs and slap an adult in the face. All right. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that, I'm gonna get is... you back for that. So you will need to select <laughs> new long or new short terms before next yeah. session. Everybody can have My... two XP for uh, friends now for all of the short terms being uh, finished, plus one XP per short term you finished. So which short terms did you finish, Ellie? I did something cool in front of people and I got a high five. Yeah, for sure. All right, excellent. So that's, yeah, so it's four XP total. How about- Where uh, do we put that? uh, You can just track it where, I think there's an experience line on your sheet. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there's not- Yeah, it's it's the last line, like on the bottom. Thank you. Along with the group rewrite pool, which and, I think is at seven. Yep. And how many uh, aspirations did uh, did you finish with, between both characters, Gilbert? Just the one. Uh, That's still you have three XP for that. Yeah. Thrash Thrash has has to get his uh, step his game up. He's got to sell weed to to nerds. <laughs> now you have weed to sell. Um, yeah. yeah. An NPC beat you to it. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and Nano uh, or. or did Nano or um, why am I forgetting the other character's name? Uh, Hawks, Hawks Jenkins. Yeah. What did Nano or Hawks? Uh, how many short term aspirations? So Hawks got a super great joke out. Um, Nano tried a rebellious act. I and... snorted. So yeah, you can have an extra. <laughs> yes. Um, and then I held Brad's beer. So I helped a friend. <laughs> You did. You didn't drink it either. Yeah. (laughs) So you can have uh, the before XP as well. All right. Uh, And we will be back same bad time, same bad channel next week for uh, the next uh, stunning installment of Family Matters. (laughs) I want you to picture like I'm talking like Heather O'Rourke in Poltergeist. That's oh, what man. I want you to picture for for this for Daisy. For Daisy. <laughs> yeah. well, now I'm now I'm sad. <laughs> How would you do that to me? <laughs> so, I don't trust oh, that now child. It's, now it's just now it's just tragic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna go, uh, I'm gonna go walk my dog and be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go watch Poltergeist and the Good Son. Everybody have a good night. Take care of yourselves and each other. Good night, guys. Mask up. Stay out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs>